and welcome to more Gehenna Gaming with Dark Days Radio runs uh, Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. I'm one of the regular hosts, Chris, but of course I am not running this. I, uh, our GM for this entire campaign is David, so I will hand over to you. Oh, hi everybody. Yeah, so we're um, running some Warhammer Fantasy. We did character creation last week. Uh, we did a little bit of the start of the story um, where we lamed a mule. Um, <laughs> Poor Jill. I apologize about today. Uh, I am suffering massively from allergies for some reason, and it's November. I don't know why my allergies are playing up. So if I sound funny or I drift off, I apologize. Um, but hopefully, now everybody has their characters fully fleshed out with all your XP and everything, and spent all the money that you have, except for Chick, because I'm guessing you have no money. Um, <laughs> Chick has two pence has right now because I've, pe- I've every... already paid him to clean my boots. That's right. Oh, he has money. More I money than money he's ever right. seen before. <laughs> but, so what I thought we'd do uh, to start with then is if everybody is fully fleshed out is we'll have a very, very short introduction of each character. Um, kind of where you spent your XP just so we kind of know what your skills are. Um, we've gone through go a few times, Chris. Um, so we'll skip that and we'll move on to um, somebody else. Who wants to go? Sure, I'll go. Uh, I am playing as Gertrude. She is a merchant of the Empire uh, and usually does a uh, mer- mercantile run. She used to do one between the wasteland of Marienburg and the city of Altdorf, but now she needs to change her ways due to new taxes. Um, and for XP, I didn't even spend it, so I'll do that next session. <laughs> So I'm not rolling dice today, then. No, it's quite all right. I'll just play at a disadvantage for uh, one session. Okay, cool. Um, what about Elaine? Have you made a character that we can pronounce the name? Uh, yeah. I uh, no. <laughs> They're <laughs> Mel Lar- Mel R Orion. Mel Alarion. I rolled the character names, so I blame the elf character name generator. Um, so uh, yeah, that's um, they are an ousted, an outcast uh, elf bounty hunter um, who rolled ridiculous stats, and um, yeah, I'm I'm waiting for them to die horribly in the first combat, just just because that's Warhammer Fantasy right there is. Uh, no, no great noble hero can stand tall for long before they are dragged into the mire and meet Moore's embrace. Um, yeah, so uh, they also, in terms of what we did off stream, in terms of spending XP points, I can't remember what exactly, I think I just rounded out some numbers, things like that on skills. Um, and I also, in in an attempt to try and uh, offer, offer a bit of a handicap, I gave her a a trauma towards fire. So um, if I see any characters or buildings on fire, I need to start taking tests or uh, get a stun to be by. So uh, mysterious fire trauma. Who knows why? <laughs> it should hopefully uh, add a little bit extra spice rather than just having Legolas running around in a Monty Python sketch. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Okay, uh, so uh, I'm going to just call you Mel. <laughs> um, because I think that works. <laughs> yeah. Melalalalalalorian is. Melalalalalorian. Uh, <laughs> suppose we can have a jung- jingle created at some point for, for, for the name. Um, Crystal, did you manage to spend your XP and flesh it out a little bit? I um I did manage to spend my XP. So I am playing uh Mari Lang, who is a uh reporter and investigator and is out to uncover scandal against a rival writer of hers. Uh, uh, right, and the wonderful, wonderful Klaus. I'll be playing Klaus, who is a uh, up-and-coming peasant. Uh, it is his goal to one day own his own farm. He is a, a simple salt-of-the-earth type. Um, 
He's just here to uh, make a little extra money, maybe get, you know, get started on that homesteading. Oh, right. I just realized I need to send you something. Well, um, so yes, last week, um, sorry, just, uh, I'm going to send something through the Discord. Uh, last week, we were, um, the start of the thing, you were on your way to Outdorf for reasons, and you'd all kind of come together as a group um, and met, where is it? Um, each other. So you already knew each other because you'd kind of been walking together for a little bit. Um, and you got almost run over by a coach leaving a coaching house um, called the Coach and Horses. This is on the road to Altdorf. Um, I have just sent you all a copy of a map of the Coach and Horses. So um, Kind of helps with a bit of the explanation kind of what's going on. Um, so it's kind of an old Tudor-esque building, muslin door, walls, wooden beams kind of going through it. Looks a little bit ramshackle, it's got a, a, a wall around it because it's it's the empire um, and yeah you want to protect things because there's things in there in their woods. Um, and I think we left you just as you were entering the, the gate into um, the coaching horses. I think that's where we left you after you'd managed to put the mule on the cart and made Klaus drive the cart. <laughs> uh, yeah, Klaus pretty much. Very I think. strong. Yeah, cool. Um, so as you kind of you, you gather up and, and enter the coaching horses coach yard, um, there's already a coach within the coach yard. Um, there's a couple of horses in the, the stables. Um, there's not really many people around. Um, the I'm going to say, Gertrude, do you recognize the, the coach? Um, you recognize the livery on the coach uh, as the Ratchet Lines of Altdorf as a coaching company. Um, you, you know that they have been quite a, they used to be quite a big coaching company. Um, but they're currently facing a little bit of competition from the Four Seasons company, uh, yeah. the one who nearly ran you over. Mm. Um, but yes, there is a, there's a coach there. There's not many people around, uh, but you can hear kind of laughter and, and, and song, and you can smell the food coming out of the main, uh, the main in itself. Um, and it seems like everybody's kind of gone inside because it is still wet, drizzly, and miserable because... It's um, always raining, but Mari, 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 come with me. Come with me. I'm going to get a story for you. <laughs> Ooh. Yes. A story of corruption and one woman's quest for recompense. <laughs> Let's go talk to the bartender or the innkeeper, whoever it may be. You're going to enter, you're going to go into the, um, the, the in itself. Uh, yeah, there's no like stall for the coaches or like a ticket kiosk or something right this is <laughs> this is just a, a an inn and a stop yep i'll just bring the the donkey back to the to the livery shall i the stable yes please do klaus please do and you never know there might be a a penny in it for you oh a whole penny uh klaus uh, make it quick you have my boots to clean remember Yes, my lord. <laughs> I make a beeline to the uh, Francesco makes a beeline to the uh, to the inn, and will is there a, a nice heavy, you know, raw iron knocker? Uh, there is no knocker on the door, but it is a it is a very very heavy wooden protected steel studded door. Um, it's kind of a little bit open at the moment. This is why you can hear the noise and you can see the the fire in the background. And you can hear the noises coming from it and the smells of the food coming out of it. Um, I was yeah. probably wondering what these smells are, having never smelt real food before. Um, I'm guessing Mel is probably a little bit confused as well with the smells, kind of dirty, rotten human food. 
Um, uh, I've been I've been traveling these roads for a while by now, and I'm accustomed to it as much as one can ever become accustomed to the the smell of human culinary endeavors. I would call them. <laughs> okay. Um, does I'm going to say one either Gertrude or Francesco. Can you yeah. make me a perception test, one of you two? Okay. Um, okay. Well, both of you doesn't really matter, I suppose. Yeah, I. It's challenging. Know. Challenging perception. So that's just no modifier, isn't it? Challenging. No modifiers. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't pass it. I got a 16 and I needed a 38. So Ooh. it looks like I passed. So you passed, and there's a couple of success levels in there, but mm. this one's not going to have any success on it. Um, as you make your way towards the, the, the inn and you're kind of looking and noting noting the livery on the on the um the coach, you notice that the that it doesn't seem that well painted. Um that underneath the paint, the wood seems quite rotten and uh, a little bit rickety and a little bit worse for wear. It's, it's a little bit of a surprise to you, considering you know the reputation of the company and, and uh, you'd expect them to do a little bit better than that. But these are hard times, so... Um, Dude. Dude, you've heard the stories from the North. I've read it in the newspapers, Amari. It's, it's dark times. Dark times abound. Anyway, we're going to bring some light to these dark times when I get the Four Seasons travel company to pay for my mule. But we need to get some leads, right? That's what you investigators do, you investigative journalists. Uh, yeah, I would need a reason to start investigating things. Of course. Well, you just saw it. They, they hit my mule, and Gertrude grabs Mari by the hand and, and brings her inside. Okay. Um, as as uh, so is is Mel following them into the into the the dryness? Um, I'll uh, I'll roll my eyes at this at this whole endeavor. I'm only half understanding. Um, you know, my Reichspiel's not so good, so I'm only half understanding that uh, Gertrude is clearly is clearly insulted. You know, something about their their small horse has been injured. And they're they're looking for uh, for some form of recompense, but uh, I'm I'm mostly just interested in getting somewhere dry for now, and, and keeping an eye on things as they develop. Right. Uh, okay. So as as those of you who enter the the, the coaching horses, you get to peruse the, the bar room. It's quite a grand. It's quite a large room. Um, there's a couple of people within there. There's a big bar area, like traditional wooden bar behind it. There's the shelves stacked with with uh, metal glasses, metal glasses, <laughs> tankards, um, <laughs> bottles of, of various colours of liquid um, that you assume is probably some form of ale or wine. Um, you can see some barrels back there as well. There's a small uh, kind of skinny man behind the bar rushing around. Um, in one corner, there's two two drunks who are singing and laughing and talking. They seem quite happy. They are wearing the livery of the coaching company. Um, over near the fire, there is a very prim and proper looking lady. A, a, a full-on lady is in the building. Um, she is sat with two other women, one who is quite tall and looks like she can probably handle herself. And the other is a very small, dainty, little, wispy lady who looks terrified, to be fair. Um, sat at the bar, there is a very foppish gentleman, um, very posh looking, possibly a little bit uh, Bretonian looking, I should say. Um, and then there's another person in the bar, I've forgotten who it is. Oh yes, there's um, a guy kind of sat away in a dark corner Head buried in a book, reading, um, youngish looking, just kind of ignoring everybody. And before you get chance to do anything, 
and kind of take, other than just taking the scene of people there. Um, it, the plump innkeeper comes waddling up to you, really happy and jovial, and is like, welcome, 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 welcome to the Coach and Horses, the finest establishment that you'll find around here. How are you today? Are you enjoying yourselves? Have you had a good journey? And he just kind of starts firing off words at you at super fast speeds. Yes, yes, oh, well, do come in, do come in, do, 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 do take it by the fire, it's nice and yes. warm over there, it's kind of hot, and, oh, would you like some food and drinks and drinks and food, would you like some yes. of this, oh, I'll get you some drinks, excuse don't wait, go, sir, go sit down, I'll get you some drinks, come. Innkeep, excuse me, please. Oh, oh yes, please. yes, sorry, yes, please. Sorry, sorry, my lady, how can I help you? We're oh. having a, quite frankly, me and my friends here are having a dreadful day, a most dreadful day, this is the- Oh no, the, that's really horrible to hear, I'm very, yes. I'm trying my best gin. to make it better for you. I just need some information and some leads. We were traveling on the road with my cart and mule and and all of that. When we were we were forced off into the ditch by one of the four seasons coaching company coaches. And I oh, demand oh, yes, that would be the last coach. That would be the last coach that is leaving here. Of course, of course. Yes. 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 Well, we haven't seen any others, and there's no more four seasons coaches here. But do you know who that driver was? Uh, hey, I, I, I know they come and they go. There's, there's hundreds of drivers. Those two over there, I have no, no idea. idea who they are. You have They're no drivers. idea. I don't know. And while you're hearing this conversation is going on, um, you can hear as well a fluttering of a bird up in the ceiling. Um, you notice there's a, there's a kind of a, a blackbird fluttering around the ceiling, and it's kind of repeating the conversation, um, but in a very kind of broken backwards ways like welcome to the seats come in and eat the horse and things like that in just kind of a really bizarre kind of parrot fashion but really not getting it right your so. establishment seem to have vermin inside what that's blackie that's my pet thank you very much that's the, why would you insult my vermin my vermins are not vermins they are pets vermins are bad things we kick out the vermin we have dogs and cats and things to chase around the rats Hmm, I'm sure, I'm sure. And then the bird goes, the rats chase out the dogs! The rats chase out the dogs! I'll have a pint of your finest ale, and I'm, uh, and Francesco makes a beeline to the uh, very well-to-do lady, because <laughs> who else are you going to try and uh, coerce out of some... Of course. Out of some of coin. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. I'm sure we'll all have something to order, but... I... Dear Keep, you've been so helpful so far, and I know you might not know in the particular driver... But did anyone get off of that coach before it made out of this place like a, a black bird out of the chaos realms? No, no, no. They, no, no one got off. Um, I do remember that the, one, of, one of the people on there, they were very, 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 what should we say, persistent and, and, and strong-willed and wanted to leave very, very quickly. That might have been why they'd been a bit of a rush. They were also running very, very late, so they should have left like an hour or two ago, so... <sighs> I don't know. Why were they running late? Did they stop here? Yes, they stopped here. They had a little bit of uh, feed for the horses. and uh, hmm. So someone would have interacted prepared. with them. Do you have a, a stable boy, perchance, or, or some kind of a manservant who might have been tending to their horses while they stopped? Oh, yes, they're still out, out, outside. They're, they'll be tending to the, 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 new, the new horses that have come, hmm. bring them down and all that, and, and feeding them the hay. Yes. And Perfect, perfect. We'll uh, we'll check with them. And uh, who's who's driving that uh, other coach outside? Well, that's not from the Four Seasons. Uh, those two in the corner. Those two who are having a little bit of fun, shall we say? They seem quite quite jolly, jolly little chaps. Yes, this seems like such a fun inn. Anyway, anyway, you go sit down, and I'll bring over some 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 drinks for you all. Uh, are you all going to have the fine the fine ale? Can you all can you all like a pint of that? It is a uh, Around here, this this fine ale is it's 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 a little bit secret. It's called Brew Cat. I'm brewing it up myself. Um, it is a little bit expensive, though. I'm hoping you can all afford it. Hmm. Mm. How much is this custom micro brew? <laughs> custom micro brew is, I think, five pennies. Ooh, five, five pennies. My God! Uh, usually, it's only two pennies for an ale. An ale and a meal. It's for the usual stuff, it's it's two pennies. But you know, these these new people who go around—they call themselves 
I don't know what is it. Is it is it wasters? I think they're called um, something to do with that part of the body anyway. Uh, uh, Gertrude, like if we beer. if we were to if we were to buy a, a buy a keg for all of us, how much mm. would that be? Maybe we could get a discount. Mm, oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Bulk, bulk, bulk discount. Keg. Um, so for a discount, if you're gonna, if you're all gonna drink it, yeah, I think I can do a deal on you. Uh, for the full keg, we're probably gonna look at about five gold shillings. Five shillings, gold, gold? gold? Or sh- silver shillings, surely. Silver shillings. Silver yes. shillings. Yes, that's the word. Hmm. I know what's going on. I may have been sampling my own wares a bit too much now. And hmm. I'm... Hmm. I'm not really. Hmm. I don't really want to crack open a keg. Um. <laughs> I mean, don't you have some of the normal golden brew? I've got you know? some normal stuff. Yes, yes, I've got some normal, normal stuff. It's only two. That's that's only two pennies. What is that there from? Is that Dank Water Brewery? I'll have a pint of that. Yes, that's that's. Mm. that's yes, we'll get some you, Dank Water. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 ale. And he bundles off and does stuff. Right. <laughs> Muttering him, muttering to himself, and the bird is muttering and making weird comments about everything. Um. Hmm. Yes, yes, indeed. Um, Mari, Mari, what do you, what do you make of all of this? Do you think there's a story here? <sighs> the innkeep was the innkeep was honestly massively unhelpful. <laughs> yeah. Um. I think if there is a story here, we haven't got the thread to pull for it just yet Hmm. um however i'm wondering i'm gonna Hmm. i'm uh uh there's the salutes the salutes gears are turning yeah uh that bird up there tends to be talking a whole Hmm. lot (laughs) is there any way that I could possibly coerce it to kind of repeat some phrases that it may have heard over the past couple hours? Yeah. Is anyone here good at animal charm or charm? I am. So (laughs) 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 that's why I was asked. Um, As you do that, as I'll go sit with the well-to-do lady, take my boots off and wave Klaus over to uh, get to it. Clean out my boots. Yeah, Klaus has <laughs> Klaus has finished uh, setting up Jenny for the night in much mm. better conditions than he will surely get, and uh, <laughs> he, will, he will get to work on those boots. Klaus, Klaus, Klaus. when you're done with that, please, I'll, I'll need your assistance outside. <laughs> All right. Um, what we'll do? Uh, we'll go with. Uh, we'll, yeah, do a do a charm animal. Uh, we'll make it a challenging roll, please, Crystal. Okay. Um, oh. Challenging means you're not adding anything to the score. So you just oh. your straight value. I got a 17. Ooh. So you do manage to convince um, the bird, the blackbird, to come over and, and, and kind of sit with you, and it will just start. It, it, it seems like there is intelligence in there of some kind because it's able to, for a bird, repeat things, but it will only ever repeat what you say. Okay. You can't manage to convince it, or or it doesn't seem to understand. So each time you ask it, but can you say something from earlier in the day? Earlier in the day, can you something say? And it will just kind of repeat back what you say in in a jumbled up manner. Dang it. Okay. Um, I will look on the ground to see if there's any like peanut shells or any sort of crumbs or anything like that that I could feed the bird. There's all well, kind of other stuff to swear. <laughs> 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 I mean, I could drop a couple f bombs on it, so that'll be fun. As you start to teach it these these words, uh, it starts teaching new new and inventive ways to swear as well. Sweet. <laughs> before and comes back with even worse <laughs> awesome all right yeah i'll find something to to kind of feed it and uh uh play with it for a little bit oh cool. it's very happy to to sit there and be played with and be petted and it coos and croons and 
starts actually being friendly with you. Sweet. Um, as right, we'll deal with the the, the noble lady now. Um, mm. So, uh, as an idea, Francesco, how are you dressed? How do you look? Uh, I would have right uh, right now. I would not be wearing my um, my best dress, um, but I have uh, uh, let's say a cape. I have a cloak on to keep me dry, um, and uh, a brimmed hat, obviously, to keep the water off me. Um, I guess it looks better than what Klaus is wearing and others, but it's still to be just common kind of clothing. Um, yeah, my so boots. You, you are... look, you look slightly common. I, I would look slightly common. It's traveling clothes for a noble, so you know, it looks, it looks, you know, not. It's not good, good garb, but it's, um, you know, it's still better than others, I guess. As you as, as you walk over to to towards her. Mm -hmm. um, she kind of catches you, catches the fact that you are heading directly towards her. She gives you kind of this snooty look up and down, looks at your feet, notices that your boot, your boot, yeah, oh, your boots are really muddy, and that the water is kind of seeped up a little bit up your up your travelling cloak and stuff. As she becomes very, very well aware that you have been walking through the rain and not rich enough to travel on a uh, a coach and she just kind of snorts and looks away from you and she kind of whispers a little bit to her to the the smaller girl with her um, um at which point I'll, I'll i'll be i'll look down and i go ah of course they're covered in in uh dirt of course klaus klaus come boy take my coat take my boots and i give i make a effort make a point of giving klaus uh two two copper two copper pieces for it and uh and uh, awaiting my pint uh i would i was traveling uh sat on a on a carriage on a on a cart and uh, we were almost run over the um the smaller lady um looks very apologetically at you and slightly terrified because I'm, I'm really sorry but the lady you saw that will not speak to you you are you're beneath her, is what she says. Beneath? Hurt <laughs> me. Uh, I'll make a really, uh, I'll make a, uh, an effort to put on my best Tilian accent, and I'll say something, I'll say something in the classic tongue, some sort of saying that, uh, you know, you should never read a book by its cover, but say it in the classic tongue. Um, as you as you speak in in the classic tongue towards her, she looks at you in shock, stands up and t turns to her uh, her hand. Uh, her ladies in waiting goes. I've not. I've had enough of this foreigner. Why would we have <laughs> foreigners around here? And she walks off up to her room and she leaves the pub. She leaves. She leaves the kind of like common room area and goes to her room. It seems she cannot take a drink. And I, I uh, sit opposite the younger lady that's still there. Oh, they've all gone. Oh, they've, they've all gone. gone. Oh, I'm going to sit near the all fire gone. then. Well, if you yes. don't want it, I'll take a drink. <laughs> <laughs> this is how Klaus actually drinks, is he? Mm. <laughs> Russian Klaus roulette. can't afford his own drinks. <laughs> but Klaus, as, as Klaus sits down and sees this and try, goes, goes to take the drink, he looks very bizarrely at it because it's actually a, a, a very slender goblet. Um, nothing that as ornate as you've ever seen before. You're used to kind of like wooden carved out things or bones that you drink out of, like horns, and there's just proper ornate. Probably the most expensive glass in, 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 in the pub. It's got this red liquid in it. Well, you're not fancy. <laughs> just neck this really expensive glass of red wine. Oh yeah, just just chug it right down. So as you all sit down, um the the, the landlord comes back to you and goes, Oh, oh and he's got his arm kind of full of all the drinks, um, puts them on the table and goes, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Gustav. Um, I'm, I'm, I will order you some food. Would you like some food? We've got, we've got, we've got all sorts of food here, from ranging from just your usual bread and, and butter all the way up to a fine dining experience. I can do, I can do whatever you like. Um, I'm not too sure what we can do about Elvish food, though. I do apologise, my lady. Um, we don't get many of your kind around here. Um, occasionally there's a wood elf who tries to steal everything and burn us down, but that's that's by and by. Um, I'm guessing you're not one of those, are you? You're not going to try and burn my pub down, are you? Um, uh, this is my only livelihood and everybody lives here. 
No fire. Mm -mm. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, uh, fine, g good food is yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. We can we can bring out a platter of good food for you. Yes, yes, yes. yes. That 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 will that will be uh uh the good food. That's going to be eight eight pennies, please. Or a plate of the good food. It's enough probably for, for two of you two or two of you to share, but if you just want some like bread and cheese and butter, there's gonna be like one one penny. A simple bread and cheese will suffice. Mm -hmm. Who who was the bread uh and the, butter? Who was the uh, <laughs> who was the uh the the lady who just left in a huff? Quite rude for someone um, of her standing, of her of her station. You've obviously yeah. never met some of the ladies of the Empire then, have you? Oof, these ladies, oof. They were an interesting bunch. I think that she's called Lady Isolded, I think. I can't remember. I think she's traveling to Old Isolde. Isolde. Is that right? Isolde. Lady Isolde. Isolde. Uh... We get all sorts here. It's like she, she's, I don't know, she's just one ones. Doesn't like talking to the common. It took us a while to get her out of the carriage to get into here. Huh. I think the only reason she left was the whole thing. And it started to rain, so she came inside. Mm. Uh, yes, yeah, so was she taking the... Um, she wasn't on the Four Seasons carriage then. She was on the uh, the other company. He's on the, yeah, yes, yes. On, 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 on the... Uh, I've forgotten the name of it. What was it called? Yeah, I can't remember it either. Line. Yeah, she's on the ratchet line. The, it's heading towards Altdorf. All these people here are on that one, and they're all going towards Altdorf. So if you're looking for travel, well, I'm sure... I'm sure the... the well, they're looking a little bit worse for wear now, but you never know. They'll be fine in the morning. Um, they can take you to Altdorf if you need to. Um, anyway, I will go and get your bread and cheese. And he wanders off. Um, mm. As Gustav, as Gustav, cheese and bread. Cheese and bread. As, as Gustav goes to leave, I'm going to stand up and walk with him, and I'm going to smile and tell him, "Oh, I am. I'm actually a writer, and I am just looking for some inspiration for some of the things that I'm writing." And I'm wondering if you could talk to me about some of the things that have been happening in the inn um, recently. Like, is there any sort of gossip or anything like that that you may uh, be willing to share with me? And I'll, I'll keep names out of all of my writing. I will make sure to keep the privacy of everything involved. I just need plot hooks, threads, uh, things to go off of, um, anything that, that may be interesting. Well, this this being uh, well the Reichland and everything well and we're in the woods and things you you, you are aware of the things in the woods aren't you and, and, and no I'm I'm not from around if you here. go out at night well this this being the region and of of night and darkness and it's getting to winter it's kind of dangerous I really don't recommend it but you know I'm a beast man Ooh. Just say what? and talk about this. This heresy. I'll, I'll I'll walk with you to the back. We'll so I'll walk with him as he walks to the back. Yeah, and he, he'll just he'll basically list off a load of folk tales about beastmen haunting yeah. and stuff towards um, you. I will I will also try to steer the conversation towards anything that's happened directly in the inn. Uh, he kind of Nothing really interesting. He'll, he 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 will try to make it interesting, but it basically sounds like it's just an inn where people come and go, um, and he just tries to make a living off interesting people who pop in every now and then. But nothing nothing interesting has happened recently in the inn. I'm gonna get as a, as we're waiting. I'm gonna get out my deck of cards and just start seeing if anyone wants to play a simple game of of cards. Not a gambler game, just a simple game. And I'll lean over to uh, Melalorio and go, what, I heard that you, they were leaving. What are yeast men? Yeast men? Is that right? Yeast men? Yeast As in men made of bread? Of bread? Bread men? No, I think the bread, the, the man brings the bread. I don't think they're so made Yeast men in the forests. Yeast men. They get the this... bread from the forest. This no, right no, no, no. Francesco, yes. Francesco. Uh, I don't know how things worked down in Tilia, but uh, in these parts, in the Reichwald, there are many, many strange, bizarre things. There wow. are men that are beasts. 
many of them look as though they're half man and half wolf. Others are half man and half goat. And they prowl looking for the lost, the damned, and the unfortunate. And how does this happen? Is this because you you marry your cousins? No, no, when, no. When you get lonely no. on a long night, and sometimes there's only a goat around, <laughs> and then you know... my God, Klaus, that's what my cousin told me. Do. I half spit out my drink. <laughs> oh, oh my. Oh, I'm yes. I'm quite shocked, quite shocked. But no, they are, uh, as I understand it, they're really some other sort of of race, uh, corrupted by chaos. Ah, know. these ruinous powers. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. So superstitious. Bleak things. Although, Francesco, I've heard stories of mutants in Tilia, and... I know you're aware of them. We don't like to talk about them. But... Uh, it's uh, superstitious nonsense. Claptrap. But, no. No, I've heard stories of them appearing here in uh, in Sigmar's empire. And many of these mutants are... Their, their families toss them out into the forest. They get rid of them. But they don't, they don't allow a priest to end these, these, these unfortunate lives. And the mutants many times band together with these beast men hmm. prowling hmm. around in war bands sometimes they raid villages i i remember once i was traveling in my cart making a grain run towards marienburg and i came across a uh, uh, a small village that i'd frequented many times there was no inn there it wasn't anything like that but there's a small little trading area and when i rounded the corner i just found burnt ruins and these terrible carvings which could have only been symbols of the dark gods so they're out there francesco and you must heed my warning and remember that these highways are not safe at night superstitious nonsense i hear the same claptrap from bretonians and their little fairies Francesco. As as you say that, <laughs> the, bar, the foppish man hears what you have said and pricks up. He's like, Bretonians? Tillian? You're insulting me? How dare you? And he kind of walks over to the table and kind of looks down at you and says, you Tillian's despicable. Oh, you've got a set of cards, have you? Oh, uh, take a seat. We're chatting. We're travellers. Yes. I, I, I don't mind a little bit of a game of cards. Would, would anybody care if I joined and we just had a game of cards? Well, perhaps you could introduce yourself, uh, oh, oh, Bretonian, I sir. I, uh, my I, name I is Philippe. Um, Philippe. I'm just a, a, a local traveller. I'm just on my way to Elsdorf. Um, I just... Travel by myself, just a bit of a wanderer, really, and uh, yeah. Mm, dangerous to do that in these times. Just wandering oh, by yourself on foot. Oh no, no, no! I'm on. I'm. I. I who? Who? Who in their right mind would walk in these places? It's just. That's just madness. Mm. I would lower myself to that. If I've got the money, I will take the coach, as I am doing. I am. Ah. Ah. Which coach are you taking? Which company? It's the uh, the ratchet line. It's the one that's outside. Mm. I, I hope it's outside. Otherwise, I'm stuck here for a fuck. Oh no! It was it was out there last I checked. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Yes. Oh, yeah, why did yes. you choose the why did you choose the ratchet line as opposed to the Four Seasons? Just curious. Because they were the ones going where I wanted to go. Um. Mm. Yes. Yes. The uh. Well, one of the Four Seasons coaches was going in the opposite direction. But I'm sure they. Yes. Yes. They were going. They they were going. Yes, they're going north up to, I think, Marienburg, I think. Uh, Marienburg? Hmm. Might have okay. been somewhere else, I don't know. I wasn't paying that attention. I didn't, they're, not, they're not going the way that I want to go, so... Hmm. Peculiar. Well... Yes, he gets, he gets out a deck of cards and starts shuffling the, his, his own deck of cards. Hmm. Hmm. Dueling decks of cards. Interesting. Uh, you have the, uh, the uh, Bretonian printing, I see. Very, very nice. The best, they are the best, they are, they are. They're even glossed in wax. Ah. Best wax. And they even have a slight smell of honey. I think it was beeswax. Deal, deal, get on with it. <laughs> mm. 
Yes. Does well, anybody I, else want to join in this game? No, no, I, I, I don't actually. Klaus, Klaus, could you give me some assistance? I need to talk to the stable boys outside, and perhaps you'll be able to uh, communicate with them in your common manner. Yes, Miss Gertrude. Let me just finish polishing up the <laughs> boots here, and we are done. Mm. All you've kind of done really is just move the mud. Lord Francesco, your boots are spit shined. I use my own spit. Yes. Very well. Put Francesco. them on for me. <laughs> I explained him pull, pull them back yeah. on. Francesco, weren't those boots black when we first met? Why are they brown now? <sighs> oh, there was, there was the murder. I missed that spot. Here we go. I also idly get out my comb and brush my hair because it's been sodden from traveling. Oh, you're wearing mm. that hat. You're good. <clears throat> yeah, so I guess... Uh, <laughs> Gertrude and Klaus can can head outside, and the uh, you can have a card game scene with uh, yeah. Mel I'm, I'm and just Francesco check off and my Tony. Money. I've spent two coin on uh, <laughs> on Klaus. I've spent like another two on on um, on uh, on beer, and another one on food. So how much is that? Yeah. Six. That's yeah, and it's yes. sixty pennies per silver shilling. Is that correct? Sixteen. 16? No, it's not 16. It's, no, it's 12. 12. 12. 12? 12? Really? 12 pennies that was, to a shilling. That was a lot more. No, but it was 20. It's 20, 20 silver shillings to the gold. Ah, that's what I was thinking. Okay. And this is why we switched to decimal currency, folks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All this weirdness. Um... I'll join in in this uh, gambling endeavor as it's one of the, it's a social activity that you don't need to speak much of a language for because it's all games, you know? Well, it's just a casual card game we're going to do. We can deal everyone in. I don't expect to gamble at this point. <laughs> oh, no. Philippe, Philippe, Philippe wants to gamble. Oh, he, fuck. He, 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 he says, um, I, we'll, we'll play a few rounds and then we, we, we can maybe maybe put some money onto it and, yeah and uh, i'm mostly we'll gonna i'm mostly gonna come up with a with a variant of a card game where i'm gonna use my knowledge of mathematics to to make it basically very hard for him to win <laughs> yeah so there is um <laughs> the game that he suggests you play is a game called the scarlet empress which is Excellent. the most common card game in the empire um and just think of it as kind of like 21 or black or Oh, cool. is it? Is it like? Oh, it's um, it's like baccarat. Okay, then. Um, yeah. In that case, then Francesco, given that he is super numerate, is going to be a complete asshole. He's mostly very good at card counting. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Um, what you're all going to need to do, those of you who are playing, um, how is it? Each each character rolls a challenging gambling test with any of their um bonuses and things that card counting gets you uh yeah i'm just looking at the talent supernumerate will give me um do, 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 i'm just gonna look at his skills do, do. uh it says you have a gift for calculation and probability and mathematical problems and given that this is a not poker and is actually more of a just sheer luck um it's all just about probabilities of of drawing cards so yeah i'll give you um focus on that i just want to find out what his skill is where is it oh, i can't see it there it is okay cool right uh so whoever wins the the challenge the the gambling role is the one who will win that round of of the game to start with he will he doesn't put any money out he's just kind of or maybe uh, Mel, who's trying to learn the game. Um, and maybe Mary, if she's around. Um, just being nice nice to people to start with. So those of you who are playing, make yourself a gambling role. Uh, what bonus do you want to give me for Super Numer? Uh Instead of challenging, make, uh, you can add. Um, the one with the highest success levels wins. So add two success levels to your role. Classic. Chris, Chris, may I make a suggestion, though? Mm -hmm. The money's not down yet, so this is a good time to just choose to fail your roll. Yeah, actually, I won't even. Yeah, I'll, I'll let him. That's a very good thing. Yeah, I'll. Uh, I'll not take the bonus on this. I'll just play normal. 
And mm-hmm. I get a 51. So, you know, I fail by... Uh, I, I get a minus... It's not about... It's, it's, it's success levels. So, it's, yeah. even if you end up with the, the with 51 being... It's a minus. Score. It's a minus three success level because I'm not using my ability, my my insider knowledge, as it were. Yeah, success it, levels. Are Mel, sorry. Success levels every ten points. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So minus three. Um, I failed by failed by three with seventy seven. And you both failed by three. Is Mary playing, or is she still trying to pull the information out of the bubbly gusta? Um, no, she's going to try to keep, uh, trying to gossip with, uh, the, the innkeeper. Oh, and all right. get buddy-buddy with him, playing with the, you know, making friends with the bird, because if you make friends with the pet, pet mm-hmm. usually you win over the owner, so. Wait, just um, want the bird. <laughs> just want to talk to the bird! Want the bird, the bird's my friend. Yes. Hey. Um, so, uh... Well, Philippe is not apparently very good at rolling dice, so um, you both managed to get, you, you're playing the game through and he's drawing out a few cards and you manage to kind of just pip him to the line on this one. And he looks a little bit forlorn, but he's like, hang on a minute. Uh, it's, it's, just, it's, just, it's just poor poor luck on the first go. Lady luck on the first go is always, uh, is always yes, uh, yes, harsh. Yes. Well, well, we'll give it another go. And he strokes his, he kind of strokes his nose and twiddles with his moustache and stuff. How, how much now? So we gamble. Uh, I believe, oh, uh, Melorin, you you understand the game? Yes, it's uh, s- similar to Elvish game. Um, yes, I understand. Oh. Uh, a simple, well, I'm a happy simple to put coin. Some on. A simple, simple coin, simple penny. Uh, well, let's, let's make it. Let's make it two pennies. Let's make it a little bit. Okay. Two pennies. Uh, two pennies. <laughs> I'm I'm changing. So anybody who actually has this at home, um, I've played through this already before, and I'm changing quite a bit of it because you can't play with the values they put in here because no one has this much money, ever. <laughs> so. Well, they expect you to put down like whole gold coins for it. Uh, he says a minimum of two silver shillings. Whoa! Yeah. But wants to, he wants to gamble with at least five. It's like... So, yeah. yeah. Um, be aware that if people ever do run Warhammer Fantasy as a, as a game system, be aware of the money, because the money is weird in the system. Um, and just kind of play with the way that the character's playing. So, anyway... So he puts down two sil- two two silver ceilings. He pr- puts it down and thinks, no, 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 that's a lot of money and brings out two pennies for you. Um, okay. Uh, and I'll use my bonus this time of plus two yeah, on it. Add your levels into it. Uh, so there are pennies on the table up for grabs. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> um, let's see. I'm going to spend a fortune because I want to re-roll that. <laughs> Did you critically fail? I, I rolled really bad. Oh, that's much better. Uh, I've succeeded by uh, one, two, three success levels. Is that with the extra two yeah. that I'm giving you? Yeah. yeah. And Mel? Yeah, two. Two success levels. Two success levels. Um, well, uh, Philippe uh, is at minus three success levels. <laughs> And he's just kind of stuck there staring at his cards in utter disbelief. He's like, what? what? This, this, this isn't... <laughs> oh. uh, it's, it's, um, uh, it's just cards. You, if, it's, it's, if, just if, a, it's just a game. It's just a bit of fun. Just wow. take this as a, really good, a as a good bit. sign that Moore is looking to, to take your coin and not your life. Yes, I, I, I like my life. And I, oh, yes, you, you Tillians, you do have this thing for... Uh, the god of death, don't you? It's a, it's a weird fascination. So I'm up six pennies. <laughs> Elves, off Elves, you... Another round? <laughs> yes, yes. Let's take another round, shall we? Shall um, we up the wager? Three pennies now? I am, I'm certainly happy to up the wager, and he sticks in three pennies as well. Yep. I'll put three pennies in. 
don't worry, I'm mostly at the end of this going to give Melorian back most of the money anyway. <laughs> oh, I've, any, I've any, any extra? I'm sort of, I'm figuring this out. I'm giving you the side eye at this point. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. <laughs> I've not got that much money. Please help. And I'm going to spend another fortune to re-roll that because I want to, I want to basically just, yeah. <laughs> Oh, not as good on that one. Uh, I failed by... Uh, let's see, different stat is four. Uh, failed by two. Failed by so two. minus right. two. You succeeded by two. Two oh, Excellent. Right. Um, he's like, uh, Philippe looks at his guys and looks at you guys. Oh, 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 and puts his card down. I've actually won a round. What? Uh, bravo, wow. bravo. The, 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 the cards seem to actually have fallen in my favour this time. Oh, this is why we play the game. Oh, such jolly good fun. Uh, let's play another one. I, how about we up it again? Up to four. I can shoot uh -oh. you some money if you need it. Uh, uh, one more round at uh, four pennies is uh, maybe enough. We do not want uh, to uh, scare off our, our elven friend here. <laughs> Nope. Okay. Um, yep. Okay. And I'll roll that. And uh, I'm going to spend another fortune to re-roll it because <laughs> for fortune comes thick and fast in this game. How much fortune have you got? Uh, I start with... Um, I start... I've got four fate total. Wow. So I thought, why not spend your fortune? This is what his life is. Uh, and I fell by zero total. For even zero. And Mel? Singular. A singular point of success. Okay. Um, Philippe's like, as this happens, Philippe goes, oh, I've, I've, I've won again. This is this, the luck. This, oh. I do apologise, I didn't mean to start taking your money. As this happens, Melorian, you notice a strange shape in the sleeve of the <laughs> It seems to be about that size. Uh, mm. It's kind of stuck maybe on the side of his inside sleeve. I'm going to snap my hand out and grab him by the wrist. <laughs> What? 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 Wait! Why? Why? Why are you holding me? This. Oh, you've got such a strong. Elves are strong. Why? Why? Get, get off me! Get! What are you doing? I'll just like pull the sleeve down. Be like, I don't think this is part of the game. I don't think you should be touching me. You. You should not be touch. Get off me! Go! How dare you accuse me and touch me, you filthy animal? And he gets up and. As he gets up and flings his arm, motor cards just shoot out of his sleeve. Uh, I will rapidly draw my rapier out and point it at his throat. You are what they call around these parts as a card sheep? Card, card, card sharp. Yes? Card sheep? You, you stupid titty. You don't even know the word for it. He pulls out a black powder pistol, fires it off. It's really loud in this, in this confined space. You get the smell of smoke, and as after, quickly just after he's fired it, he bolts up the stairs away from you. Um, in in the confusion, um, I'm gonna chase him because he's got my money. The bastard. <laughs> the money's on the table. Oh, is the, the, the money on the table? Oh, well, the money's been left then. on the table. He's not had time to pick the money up yet. So how much money have yeah. we made off him then? <laughs> Uh, that last round was what four? Four, and we did oh, two and three, so we've upped the stakes. So we've mostly made about eight pennies off him, give or take, that we split yeah, between. So, us. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll make it a nice round ten, just because All he right. left a few yeah. coins on the table that he was playing with as you were playing the game, and like, like you do with the the chips and stuff. I'm happy he with left that. his he left his Bretonian deck of cards there too. If you want oh yeah, to let's pill for them as well. <laughs> They're all over the they're all over the floor at the moment. They're just scattered everywhere. Um, yeah, fifty two pickup. These uh, are Bretonians are uh, how you say bastards. <laughs> bastards, yes. 
I'll uh, I'll put a couple of pennies on the the counter for the the barkeep and sort of apologize. Yes. <laughs> broken. There's a hole in the ceiling right where the bl- yeah. when the, the little lead shot's gone through it. This hopefully, bird hopefully okay. the blackbird's okay. <laughs> blackbird's with me. Um, everyone else could do something far more interesting than just playing cards and yeah. Kids. I mean, I'm sure I'm sure uh, Gertrude and Klaus will peek their heads and just be like, "Why did a why was there a gunshot? Did we hear do we hear a gunshot? Oh, everything's just fine. A card okay. sheet. It's okay. Card sheet. Oh, it's okay. fine. Card. Yeah, sure. Okay. And then they will proceed the back sheet. out because uh, we, Klaus and Gertrude, need to talk to the stable boy. Um, just one thing. Uh, well, uh, Mary is still talking to what's his face. She does learn something else. I'm just. Yeah. I can't find it. Why is this being so slow? Oh yeah. The you hear? You, um, he tells you about the story. He tells you the story of the mayor of Grunberg, um, which is a town not too far from uh, where you are at the moment. Um, he said the mayor. He, he was burnt at the stake. You, did you know? It's quite a, quite a, quite a scandal. Um, so apparently, a few months ago, he was uh, caught um, for being in league with chaos and the dark gods. Someone saw him and overheard him talking to his cat, and that he was feeding his cat blood in his milk. It was all a bit oh, and it's a bit weird. And so someone caught him and uh, and uh, yes, yes, they burned him at the stake. It was all a bit. Uh, mm. Maybe you could write about that and, and, and things. That does sound very interesting. It sounds very much like groupthink happening, where everyone just kind of makes the decision and goes with it. Anyway, um, awesome. And you then you suddenly hear the crack of the gun go off. Um, um, I'm fairly certain that someone in my party. I'll be right back. <laughs> And he's like, that was a gunshot! And he's just, he, he, he grabs something from behind the doorway. You yep. can't tell what it is, but it looks quite large, and he runs off somewhere, and you don't see where. Somewhere. I don't think any of us were able to afford to purchase a gun. Am I, am I wrong there? Does anybody <laughs> actually have a gun? I believe that is correct. I believe, yeah. we I, are. I believe they're probably going to be about 10, sil- uh, 10 gold crowns, if not more. Yeah, we yeah, are all exactly. far too poor to have guns. You've probably never even seen a gun. If well, someone shoots you, to, your net uh, worth increases. Just yeah, I'm going to head back out. The... <laughs> so true. I'm going to head back out of the kitchen and into the, um, to the tavern area. Oh, good, yes. If, if you do get a shot, your net worth really will increase. Wow. I can sell that, yeah, right. uh, that ball to pay for the, uh, pay for the doctor. The <laughs> if you get attacked, with, if you get shot with a, a, a sling, your net worth will go up as well. Yeah, pistols, eight gold crowns. <laughs> The master has given me a bullet wound. <laughs> <laughs> master loves me. Anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> right, okay. Uh, so, uh, what are we doing? Klaus and Gertrude? We're talking to the stable boy about, uh, I assume, the uh, coach that left earlier. Yeah. The Four Seasons. Yes. Uh, boy, boy. Do you have a minute? Yes, sir. How can I help you, sir? Uh, I'm a lady. Sorry, me lady. How can I help you, me lady? Uh, I don't get many ladies around here in this shit-infested... Oh, sorry, sorry. This this manure-infested building? Yes, uh, understood. <clears throat> uh, me Is this and your my... It's a very nice meal. Yes, that's Jill. She's very hard-working, but let me tell you, something very unfortunate happened earlier tonight. Oh, no. Yes, we are traveling on the road to this fine inn that you work at, and uh, we were forced off the road into a ditch, and Jill was hit oh, no. by one of the Four Seasons coaches. Yeah? And I was wondering, do you remember who the driver was? No. You didn't talk to the driver. Could you describe the driver? Tall. Was that tall, you said? Tall. Okay. Like, like, like tall. Like, uh, uh, how tall? Wide. How tall and wide? Very good. How tall and how wide compared to my man, sir, uh, my friend Klaus here? Hello. Well, you know those short, fat people that walk around with the big beards. Like a dwarf. Those... I don't know what they're called. They're short. 
but dwarves are not, not tall. Yeah, no, but like one of those, but bigger. A big dwarf? Yeah. So like a man. Um, a man with a beard? Uh, did he have a beard? I don't know. Turns around and talks to a horse. The horse whinnies at him. He turns around and goes, <laughs> Bertrude says no. Bertrude said no. <laughs> Uh-huh. Uh, well, uh, <coughs> could you ask? <coughs> oh, so you, uh, I, I, you speak horse then, do you? You, you <laughs> use a clever one as well. Yeah, they're not very positive. As well, we should get him round. Get him round for some eggs and some biscuits. Hmm. Hmm. Um. <coughs> well. Miss Gertrude, I don't think we're going Excuse to get me. much on this this coach no it seems as though we aren't we should maybe just write off our losses <laughs> excuse me klaus excuse me that is why peasants like you are down at the bottom wallowing in the mud while people like me we demand recompense for how we've been wronged i mean I'm we I'm not a fancy Use business, business lady like you Klaus, or nothing. Klaus. But it seems like you're going to spend a lot of money ch chasing down this this carriage company person. And how much are you going to get get off of them? It doesn't you, seem Klaus, like a very good... You, excuse me, Klaus. Do you know how much investment. a mule is worth? Not to mention oh, yeah, get, that in the imperial legal good, system, good in the imperial legal the system, mule. they must pay the plaintiffs legal costs so they'll have to pay for my lawyer when this certainly goes to court and will certainly be written by mari as a grand adventure which will get right, her tons but, of money and it'll it's highlight take a lot of time, the wrongs it? of this and and don't you don't you got like some some trading to do shouldn't shouldn't you maybe concentrate on 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 well, bringing in the money of course of course of course, I'm going to keep doing my trading. The lawyer will do a lot of this. However, I need to get some of the information ahead of time. Uh, excuse me, stable boy. Sorry. I just have to educate my manservants on how things work in the cities in high society or middle class society. We're not in a city. You see. Klaus, let's step out this of the stable. The it's, it, it stinks in here. But it's really Actually, these here. people are weird. Um, I'm going to... Yeah... Uh -huh. <laughs> just kind of Gertrude yeah. leaves and I'm sure that he uh, she and uh, Klaus will continue to argue for a little while but we can we can fast forward to uh, the main plot of this game we can move along to the actual story is a plot <laughs> <laughs> I guess um, so yeah uh, how about Gertrude and Klaus come back in just have as a the gun shot goes off well, uh, yeah, sure. Just they see nothing. Timelines wrong. going on here, so they eat, they eat their bread, and I don't know, Gertrude would just be like, "So, I guess we should stay the night until Jill's feeling a bit better, then we can keep going." If we're all sat at the table having the Do food follow, and drink, did you just let Philly run off? Uh, me. Yeah. Uh, ooh. Good question. He did insult your honor. He did. But you're also and... not getting. You're also not getting paid to fight him, though. So I don't know. Yeah, but um, he also he... has a black powder weapon. Yeah, that he's fired, and the innkeeper. Yeah, so five grabs... minutes later, after he reloads that thing, you're and, in and, trouble. The innkeeper... <laughs> and the innkeeper's grabbed something heavy, right? Because he's a bit annoyed. <laughs> so I've got backup. If the innkeeper wants to keep the law of his uh, the land in his pub going, okay. Yeah, I'll go after the French after the Bretonian. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we know what we mean. The Bretonian bastard, right? Yes, I I wasn't going to butcher that accent, so we no. Um, yeah. Uh, so as as you go off and chase him, he's run up there to the second floor of the the pub, um, and you follow him up there. You get to the top, and you 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 see um, Gustav, the uh, the, the innkeeper, stood at the at the top of the stairs as well, holding a massive blunderbuss, going. And sees you running up, turns around, and goes, 
What? What have you done to my pub? Why was there a gun? I have done nothing to your pub. It is that a Bretonian bastard who was cheating at cards and he fired his pistol. He insulted me. He insulted my family. He insulted my lands. And that's a very nice blunderbuss. And I think if you point it at him, we will deal with his matter very promptly. Oh, oh, yes, 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 certainly. Uh, oh, I, I do apologise. I just, I just get very, very nervous around around this time of year and this this kind of like late, 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 late hours when things go. Bumping. How about we go to his room and we give him a good lesson? Uh, as you my notes are being really that's really annoying me. Um, so let me just reorganise things around a little bit so I can. Hmm. Um, yes, he, he goes. Yes, yes, yes. Let's go. Let's let's go find. Let's go find him and then have have our words with him, shall we say? Um, I'm going to reorganise things because my notes have just disappeared off my other computer. So um, everything's taken so long to load up. Uh, uh, where did you go? As you kind of walk down the corridor towards where you where um, uh, you you uh, tells you where the um, Philippe was staying, um, you hear a window open and like slam open. Like you, you can hear the um, what they called the shutters slam open. Um, you get the feeling that he's uh, trying to make an escape out of a window. Um, in one of the rooms. Ah, Patana. Um, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, um, oh, let's see. Do we, yeah, let's, we should kick open the door, really. I'll let the bar, I'll let the innkeeper go first. He's got a big blunderbuss. I'm no fool. Wait, uh, Gustav, well, you, you suggest to kick open the door. Gustav looks at you. I've got a set of keys. I don't need to kick anything uh, you, out. You, you, you point, I'll open the door for you. This, this is a good idea. Why have I gone? This is, this is a <laughs> tiny. They went very German then first. I said, no, they're not quite accent. Natürlich, <laughs> now. He's gone French. He's actually turned into a Bretonian. Um, yes, 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 yes. Here's, here's the keys. You, you open. I will get ready. And, and he holds up the blunderbuss kind of like he's trying to fire it as a rifle. Yeah. Uh, it's one of these really massive things that if he probably does fire it, you're aware of black powder weapons, you think it might blow his face off. Yeah. Uh, he quite clearly does not know how to handle this weapon. I'll open the door for him. As the door opens, um, you see the roft of the cloak um, as Philippe jumps out of the window. Um, Gustav screams, Duck! <laughs> I'll, I'll be down low already because I know what's going to happen. <laughs> and he just lets loose with the blunderbuss. It deafens you. It throws Gustav back against the wall behind <laughs> Um It's hit him in the face as it kind of ricocheted into him, and he's just kind of dazed on the floor. Um, and Philippe has made his way out of the window. And as you, after the loud bang of the blunderbuss, um, you hear from just outside the window a small whimper of pain. <laughs> you can tell quite how much pain because you're still kind of deafened from the, the blunderbuss shot just above your head. Um, yeah, I'm no, going to make a quick please. exit down the steps and out the pub because if he's crippled himself, I'm going to run that gif through. Um, it's a point of yeah, honour. So, <laughs> um, as you run down, Gustav is just kind of lying there, kind of unconscious at the moment. Um, as I run down... Else- into the inn, I'm going to cry over to, Mal- uh, to Malorian, the bastard is this way! All, 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 all of you um, are now, have now heard this blunderbuss go and you've seen this mad Tillian running around. Um, what, are you, what are you all guys doing? Do you not think it's getting out of hand, maybe? Um, oh, okay, fine. Case <laughs> <laughs> after Francesco. If he dies, I'd like his boots. Gertrude puts her feet up on the table and starts looking at this Bretonian deck of cards. <laughs> oh, Marie is there, what, with a pen and paper ready to go, and... <laughs> yes. She, she pulls out, like, a pen and paper and is like, 
what's going to happen next. <laughs> you wanted a story. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. Yeah, I'll go out the door and uh, I'm going to go find where the, yeah, where the where the window would have gone out into the courtyard, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, um as you're kind of doing this, you are you think you're talking to everybody, but you're actually shouting because everything's stopped. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the bastard is <laughs> this... <He's> out here. <laughs> um <laughs> as you run around the side of the, the, the inn, you, you see um Philippe kind of crouched over and curled up in a ball on, on next next to the wall, um kind of whimpering and crying and he's clutching his leg. Um On guard. Weird noises outside. Um, as you as you, you look down, you notice um, there's a dark stain kind of spreading through his trouser leg, um, kind of below the knee, um, and he's whimpering and crying in pain. As you say, on guard, he just kind of looks at you and goes, "It hurts," and starts babbling in Bretonian. I'm sure we can uh, come to some arrangement to to fix your. Your your leg? My, my leg, it's 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 and he, he, it's 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 hurt. I, I I fell from the window. I got and I got shot. And he can't quite see who you are in, in his blur of pain. He doesn't realise who you are. I'll Man, make a point of my putting my rapier <laughs> at his at his throat. <laughs> Give me your weapons now. I did, don't Piss have them weapons. over here carefully. You say kick them. Piss them. I said pass, but my <laughs> my my right hand is bad. Piss them over here carefully. I don't need to piss. Pass them over. You can, but but it's over there. And he points, and you see a black thing in the snow and mud. Is that the is that the pistol? You can't tell from this distance. Oh yeah, I'll be bagging that. Um, <laughs> and and the rest of your money. He reaches into his pocket and hands you about, I'll say, two silver shillings. Excellent. Um, uh, the one is for the insult. The other is for your doctor or or the the cherigan to deal with your leg. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. If I see you here again, if I see you any time at all, your life is forfeit, you bastard. He hunches over and kind of looking like he's kind of thanking you and kind of trying to do that whole kissy boot thing. Now, by Maud's name, get Points out of here. Points a pistol at your head. Points a pistol at my head? Yeah. Ha <laughs> you are stupid, Gillian. You fell for the trick of me being... Truly injured. And <laughs> I'll run him through. Then. <laughs> yeah, you run him through. He's and a point blank range. I'll just go forward. Um, I'm guessing you you held it at some point. Let's see how where where have you actually? I've got the point, point of my rapier at his throat. Well, let's actually do some dice rolling for this, just to see how see if, how badly you do hurt him. It's not that's held right just to hold. That's the wrong thing. Come on, critical hit. Come on, critical hit. It I'm going to give you a critical hit. It is impale is... and it is uh, fast as well, which I can't remember what fast does. Uh, fast means. <laughs> there's a minus 10 against it with a fast quality to defend against it so just roll, um, just roll me just roll me a critical hit i'm trying to trying to find the table oh i can choose a, a, i can okay a wielder of a fast weapon can choose to attack outside of the normal initiative sequence so as he pulls his pistol screw it i just go for him <laughs> yeah cool uh say so roll me a critical Ooh. Wherever, whatever that is critical oh table, mama seven four daddy wants a new pair of boots uh eight <laughs> uh 81 81 all right. Uh, oh, uh, there's different parts of the body. Um, uh, uh, where are rock, you pointing? At his throat. You... So it's his, his head. throat. So we'll say we'll say body. Body, yeah. Because um, a rapier is probably not going to go through a skull. No, no, no. Don't want to. Eighty-one. Uh, gut wound. Uh, so yeah, you kind of slice him straight through and kind of belly open him up. Um, <laughs> Shit. 
he is now quite profusely bleeding from his opened up chest as well. Um, and he's starting to gag because you started at the throat. Um, you've kind of nicked the windpipe a little bit and he's slowly Shit. unable to drown. Well, he's probably drowning in his own blood. Yeah, least. yeah. Um, um. And he looks mildly surprised that you've actually done this to you, that you've done this to him. Um, and he, you hear a click as he tries to pull the um, suit you. Um, but the pistol is damp and wet. And Thanks, fuck. <laughs> or um, dying um, in a very unpleasant manner. I'll, um, billions of bastards. I'll pick off him his weapons and the pistol and the other one he chucked and any other money on him. Who's else? Wait, who's watched you... this? Who's watched me just kill someone? Sorry. <laughs> I am. I'm. I'm writing everything down. I'm not even paying attention to what you're doing. <laughs> Hey Klaus, I wonder what's going on out there. Sounds like a lot. Can I have some more butter? <laughs> oh yeah, help yourself. <laughs> uh, as I say, I'll, I'll, I'll actually... take all this stuff and get back into the inn because it's so sodden out here. Um, yeah. So you're you just going to leave him dead outside the inn? <laughs> oh no, I'll tell the innkeeper he's dead. But I'm not dealing with it. <laughs> oh my god, he's got a Crap to more money than I thought he did. Um, okay, so what you find as you kind of take his weapons... So how many has, pistols is that? He's only got one pistol. He, he was trying to trick you by pointing at something else. Ah, uh, sneaky bastard. So he's got one pistol. Um, so it's ranged pistol. Yep. Uh, it is... I don't know what that 30 in brackets means. Um, his his on 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 his persons. So uh, the 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 deck of cards, obviously Gertrude is playing with. Um, as you are kind of going through the deck of cards, you realise there are five extra cards in the deck. So it's not fifty two cards; it's actually fifty seven, and there are five extra aces in the deck. It is mm. a deck. Um, as Francesco goes through his body, you find two sets of dice on him. Oh, excellent. Um, bit of a gambler. I've got uh, almost enough for a game of uh, Warhammer now. Um... <laughs> well, a game of Age of Sigma with the uh, Sons of Behemoth. Because oh, yeah, yeah. Classic. classic three models classic. in an entire army. Um, <laughs> but you also find another bag of coins. Hmm. Um, you pick it out and you kind of feel it. And it feels very heavy. Um... Yeah, you, you, I'm going to give you this because I want to see what you do with this much money. You have 39 <laughs> silver shillings. Sorry, how much? 67 pennies. 67 pennies and 49 shillings. Yep. My. Well. Um, Whether they're real or not, you don't know. Hmm, well, that's not my problem right now. Uh, I'll turn to Melorian uh, and go... Uh, uh, um, how much was the uh, wine here? <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll give like a, a concerned look and I'll look down it after you've finished rolling the body. Um, <laughs> you should mind your temper more. I've it was seen a cheat. With large bounties on their heads for less than what you've just done here. I am of this noble blood and he insulted money. me. And I'm sure you of an elf, of an elven ancestry should understand it well. I understand. I just express words of concern is all, is all. I'm sure uh, you deserved it. As more would say, today for him, tomorrow for me. I'll also make some religious sign of more, which is kind of like a blessing to the dead and then saunter off rather fucking happy with myself. And uh, and I'll uh, toss over a silver sh uh, a silver shilling to um, to 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 marry. Um, um, just uh, get yourself a bottle, and we shall drink, <laughs> and we shall write a tale. Okay. Right. Um... And basically, I'm paying for dinner for everyone. 
as you as you enter back into the the coaching horses, um, you hear the muttering of the the blackbird again, um, and and you kind of kind of looking around. He's like wondering if everything's calming down. You notice the blackbird is actually perched above the man in the corner who's reading his book, and the bird appears to be reading the book. Reader, eh? And what we will do is we will have a break here. Yeah. Cool. We will be back very shortly, so 10, 15 minutes, uh, with more of this insanity. Uh, I'm sure we come back to a wonderful meal for the party, but uh, yeah, we'll be back in a moment, so uh, we'll see you soon.
Killing the Bretonian. Oh no! Uh, after you, David. Um, <laughs> yes, yes, because that's that's how you deal with Bretonians. You just stab them in the body and. I'll have, ble- I'll have given like I, I'm going to be kind of nice as I go back in. I'm going to give at least like I don't know, five five shillings, um, five shillings to the uh, innkeeper, uh, 
for the cost of dealing with the Bretonian body. Yep. And I'll say that Klaus will help out because obviously Klaus is looking for an excuse to pull some boots off someone. <laughs> I mean, Klaus, Klaus has got an entire new getup now. <laughs> he looks very Bretonian. None of it fits. It's all a bit too tight. But yes, um, what, what, what was I saying? Oh, yes. Fluffy feather hat. <laughs> I'm a gentleman, I am. Look at me. <laughs> Run <Right> now. Right. <laughs> Polish <Awesome>. me boots. Sweet <laughs> Polish. Um, well, yeah, so um, as as this, you come back in, you start talking to the to Gustav, who has kind of come round and is just kind of daisily walking around. He doesn't seem quite as chipper as normal. Um, he's quite quite grateful that you're, you're going to pay for him. He offers you um, the now vacant room um, that the Bretonian was sleeping in, and there is another spare room in there. He offers them to you for a discounted price. Okay. I'll, I'll give you them for free. He's got to make money somehow. Well, yeah. hold on. That Bretonian already paid for that room. You're trying to charge us twice. The Bretonian has not paid for the room. You, I take payment in the morning. After I, I give you a tab, and then I take all the money in the morning so we know how much you've actually had. Hmm, peculiar. That's not how most coaching ins I, I think you'll find work. it is. Yes. Um, he, well, I tried, everyone. I tried. Um, <laughs> you can you can do a... You can do a... Uh, blah. Haggle? Mm. Haggle, that's the one. You can do me a haggle roll. Uh, uh, I think going you guys... to be challenging. I think you guys want me to haggle. Well, we yeah. can all try to haggle, but I'm definitely haggling. I'm usually pretty good at this. Um, is it, what's, what's the next level up from challenging? Uh, I think it's With, just... Basically, uh, take 20 off the score. Uh, um, hey, um, can I use a, uh, a fate point uh, if I rolled 100? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna do that, everybody. You could also just keep the the critical fail just for the comedy value of it. Uh, nah. Um, I think there's something broken with this dice roller because I rolled a hundred again. <laughs> um, wow. Let me just check this. Well, the first I'm time rolling just, in the darker days Discord the right now. first time you just rolled one hundred instead of rolling D one hundred. Oh, oh, that so, is true. One hundred okay. equals one hundred. So, I so did you only actually roll. roll a only rolled a natural one hundred that one time. Okay. <laughs> so then I spend the fate, and now I got a thirty-seven. So there you go. I'm, I'm, I've definitely successfully haggled with. What is your one, haggle score? <laughs> Sorry, uh, it is. Uh, 59. Oh my god, you have successfully had this. Oh, wait, no. 49. Just 49. Oh, 49. 49. 49. No, you've not then. What? You said it's a. Uh, no, well, I wanted it to be the next level. So it's. Uh, yeah. you're taking 20 so off I got a 30. I got a 37. So therefore. If your haggle skill is 49, that goes yes. down to 29. So you need 29 or less. Oh, minus 20. Okay. Minus 20. Oh. He's very dazed and very confused and has got a broken nose and isn't really listening. Um, oh, yeah, he shot himself. The wrong price, but it's only going to cost you. Usually, he tells you usually the rooms are like uh, ten silver shillings each for the night. Um, what? He, he will give you both rooms for five silver shillings. Five silver. Yeah, I'll I'll uh, pay that in total for yeah. all. all of them. Oh, well, well, I think you mean our friend the dead Bretonian will be paying <laughs> if, Fran if Francesco is paying for it. And I've enough. also paid the uh, the the innkeep for disposing of the body because you know I've caused a mess. And also he needs to repair that hole in the wall that he's mostly shot. <laughs> yeah, he's probably the, the, yeah the window that he shot is also kind of missing. Um, there's a small bullet hole in the um, and yeah. But anyway, um, a, a shallow, freshly dug grave over by the uh, over by the coach house that uh, Klaus is working on. It's just an old game of right clan. So she tries to work out how to use a spade. <laughs> I'm going to sit right, okay. and clean the uh, clean the pistol. People could do everything else. I Francesco's happy as Larry. Yes, but as as this is going on, as I say, as you walked in, um, the bird is. Going to read the book, and so as any as you kind of notice this weird 
weird thing happening. A bird reading the book. You notice that the the guy whose book it is starts to go deathly pale. He looks really quite scared. His hands start to shake. And out of the book, black smoke starts to rise. The guy drops the book and runs as quick as he can out of the inn and is gone, leaving the book and all his luggage and his drink and food on the table untouched. The black smoke begins to swirl and take shape. And you start to see twisted tentacles and eyes forming out of the mist. The bird begins to cackle. Ah. Uh, and no, flaps so, away. So, throw it in the fire. Throw it in the fire. Francesco, throw it in the fire. The what? The book? Yep. I'm going to grab the book. Be careful, Mari. Be careful. As you, Throw it in the fire. You, Throw it in the fire. You're on the wrong side of the room. You move as you move nope. across the room towards the book. As you get to the book, as you get to that side of the room, the table creaks and cracks and drops. The book drops to the floor, and a um, creature appears, shimmering in purple and blue and pink. Tentacles writhing, teeth snapping, feathers on its arms, uh, bird-like feet start to scratch at the floor, starting to writhe a little bit in pain. Everybody, what is your initiative? Uh, ah. The initiative is scared. 27. 20, uh, I'm going to have to write this down, so hang on a second. I actually need to remember who goes when and what. Uh, I don't have a pen. Why don't I have a pen? Do you have to roll for initiative? No, uh, it's your no. value. I thought so, okay. Is it I or INT? I can't remember. Uh, I. I, oh. okay. Oh, sorry, yeah, int, int is um, intelligence, sorry, yeah, so. Okay. 25 then, sorry, yeah. Oh, we all made that mistake, okay, cool. <laughs> no, 27, <laughs> sorry, yeah, 27. We're all equally wrong. <laughs> I'm glad I asked. <laughs> I'm not, I'm much not slower worse. now. So we've got Francesco at 27. Yep. I'm uh, at 25. Murray, Murray's at 25. Klaus is at 24. Ooh, Klaus is not that bad. Uh, do I even ask what the elf is at, Mel? Is it like... 93. <laughs> 93. <laughs> uh, 50, 50, 55. Basically 93. <laughs> Does that mean I get to act twice before? <laughs> and 38 for Gertrude. Wow. 38. Okay. So, yeah. Um, oh, Klaus is the slowest. Uh, an elf. You are quite aware of the nature of demons and chaos. And you, as you start to see the smoke writhing out of this book and the, the forms twisting within it, you know exactly what is happening. And you jump forward um, and, uh, and jump ahead of Mari as Mari is trying to make her way to the book to throw it in the fire. And you get to attack. What would you like to do? Um, well, I've got my quarter step. So I'm probably going to go and go for a good, solid, double handed whack um, with the quarter step. Um, while while emitting a, a loud elfish curse, um, I have. Don't a, ever let me roll dice. I have a talent strike to stun, so I ignore called shot penalty for the head location. So I'm going to aim for the head. You can't quite tell what's head. Okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's. it's doesn't seem to appear to have a form that would have that kind of a... Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, its form is probably writhing and kind of changing slightly. At the moment, so it seems to be the face. It's trying to, like, it's trying to kind of coalesce into a full solid mm. shape. It's not, it's not is it fully solid. Is it making any sounds? Is it... There's a really high-pitched kind of scream coming uh... through. Um, it's not loud. It's kind of, imagine, it's like tinnitus, basically. It's just really, really, really irritating. And you can't stop it. Even covering your ears, it's still screaming. 
in your head. So the way this attack works, or the way attacking works here, um, you are going to perform a weapon skill test, um, or ballistic skill, but weapon skill because you're using a staff. Um, you will roll. There's no surprise conditions. So I'm just looking at the, the reference sheet because nobody usually does this. Uh, what, how do you do this? You roll, I roll, and then we do things. And then whoever has the higher success level wins the combat. And then we work out damage based on the number of success levels and stuff. So I've rolled mine. Uh, if you would like to make yourself a weapon skill check uh, yeah, with your redonkulous weapon skill. I got 19 with my weapon skill. 61. <laughs> so four, four degrees of success. <laughs> with, with the bunk. <laughs> I need to meta this somehow. Okay, um, yes, you, you do manage to, uh, as, as it rises in pain and, and it's, it's kind of birth pangs, so to speak, um, you bring the, the staff down and with your elvish timing and skill, you, you notice that some part of it is starting to form and form so solidly and you manage to direct the blow onto this solid part of the beast. Um, as it's going on. Um, so you do some damage. Um, I don't know what the damage on the bow staff is, but it's going to have plus four to it, whatever it is. Okay, core staff is strength bonus, so three plus four. So um, three, and then, so... And then another plus four for the successes, is that correct? Then another plus four because of the success levels, yes. So that is so, a total oh, of 11. 11. Uh, it is going to take a number of wounds, which is going to be... Okay, cool. That's not that many wounds. Uh, also, while I've just remembered this, um, everybody needs to make a corruption roll. Yeah, I was going to say. Uh, corruption runs off. Moderate. Off, corruption uh, moderate. Hold on, let me find it. Uh, corruption test uh, means you have to make a. Uh, where is it? Corruption. Uh, a cool test. Or an endurance yeah, test. Um, hmm. I'll um, be making a cool test by the looks of it. Yeah, I think everybody, I think cool makes more sense. And I fail that. So if you fail... I also failed. Um, so what is it? It's a moderate exposure. It's moderate exposure. So every, so you'll gain two corruption points. Yes. Okay, so, so my cool is 37 and I roll the 35. So that's fine. You that's are going point. to gain one corruption point because it's a moderate success. Or marginal success, I should say. Yeah. Where do we record corruption on the sheet? Right there where it says corruption and mutation. Um, what about Melorian and Gertrude? I roll, I rolled Gertrude passed. I rolled 83, so failed by four degrees. Uh, you just get two corruption points. How much did you pass by, Gertrude? Uh, I needed a 34 and I got a 22, so that's one degree of success. Yeah, so you're, you're going to get one corruption point. Okie doke. Oh, right. And this probably should have looked a bit start. So, okay, so you have managed to do some, some damage to it. Um, who is going to be going next? I think Gertrude might be going next, actually. No, uh, this is going to go next, but it's still writhing in the ear, so it's not actually going to do anything, so Gertrude is going to go next. Yeah, uh, so just kind of, let's talk about position a little bit. So Mari has the book with... Not the yet, thing. she's not managed to get to the book. Yeah. Oh, crap. We kind of stamping in the table is broken on top of the book. So what, do we have like torches and sconces on the wall? Do we just have candles abound? How is this place lit? It's 
lit with um, kind of torches within sconces on the walls and there's candles and things around. There's all sorts of sources of fire that you can use. There's even a fire. Um, yeah, um, so Gertrude will grab the uh, closest torch and then throw it at the book, hoping that uh, that will set it alight. Make me a ballistic skill check. Yeah, I'm terrible at this. Don't worry, everyone. I'm not going to burn down the inn. No, but you are going to burn, burn down towards down. an elf who is who is afraid of fire. I am going to burn down the inn and scare <laughs> the elf. Um, all right, so let's... Uh... Ah, ballistic skill is not one of the core skills. I do not have it. Uh, is that... Um, oh, ballistic it's, skill it's, is a uh, characteristic. A, yeah. It's yeah. a characteristic, yeah. It's next, it's... Yeah. <clears throat> I'm not good at this. And I got a 97 critical fail, everyone. But it was only really critical if it was if you oh no no no. Never mind. Oh, no, it's, yeah, it's, it's 96 up. Yep. Uh, so yeah. Do you want to use a fate to reroll it? Nope. This is the time where we want the uh the goofiness to ensue. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, guys, the end burnt down and we all died. Thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, 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 it's what I mean, you expected to die. So, um, yes, Gertrude, you pick up um, a, a flaming log out of the fire as you're sat in this nice grand chair where you were watching everything, and you just kind of pick it up and go, it's and not you a critical throw it. fail, by the way. It's it's just a fail. It's an automatic <laughs> fail. as a ninety six to a hundred. A critical remember is if you roll a double. Oh, that's it. Okay, so you just you just you, you kind of you kind of fling it forwards. Oh, bummer. Um, but you don't really because <laughs> you're you're not used to engaging in combat. It's it's all kind of a bit new and weird to you. Um, you just kind of fling it but not with enough force, and just kind of tumbles to the floor, um, scatters through some of the um, the hay and things on there. A little bit start to and singe. Nothing's on fire yet. But it is, it is now kind of, it is sitting within the, the, the hay that's scattered along the floor that you find in most places to kind of keep things clean and stuff. So that is where it is at. I'm trying to find the, the rules for its traits. I will, having drawn my rapier, um, use my fast advantage to act whenever the hell I like. Um, oh, yes, you can do that, yes. And will whenever attack. Um, so my melee is, with the rapier, is a 48. So, uh, yeah, I just need to roll 48. Well... Obviously, it's going to have its defense. Better, better than what I roll, basically. Uh, yeah, I rolled a six, so I've got four degrees of success against it. What would what did it roll? It rolled a thirty-one, and so we got one degree of success. So I've got three degrees of success against it, and can uh, I find the rules for this? My weapon is. What rule are you looking for? You're going to use. Fine. So I do ten points of damage to it on its um, on its twelve. What's a twelve? A twelve is the uh, whatever counts as its left arm. It's it's not got it's not corporeal yet. So you've you, you've luckily you've done the same thing as as Melor Mel Melorian Melorian. You've managed. To, it's not actually in the rule book, apparently. This, this. Story. What's that? What's the problem? Demonic. Demonic. Yeah. Hold on, I'll look it up. I've got a book here. And that's because I can't spell. Demonic. It means it is magical. Uh, all attack. All its attacks are considered magical. Roll one d10 after any blow is received. If the creature rolls. Um, if the creature rolls the target number higher or, um, sorry, after the blow is received, if the t creature rolls the target number or higher, the blow is ignored. Um, okay, that makes sense. Um, so I'm going to do this twice because you both just hit me. 
Yeah, it ignores your blow, Chris. So yeah, the target number is its value it's got. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it ignores it. Should the creature be reduced to zero wounds, its soul returns to the realms of chaos. What other traits of it it's got? It's mostly got some other things like it. It's got um, fear and corruption and things. So fear is the other thing that you'll need to think about. Okay. Yeah, we should have rolled fear, which is that everyone rolls a cool check because you get. You did that. You kind of. You all did that with your um. Yeah. Other thing. So we'll ignore that for the moment. Everything that's going on at the moment is all a bit mad. So, um, yes, as, as you kind of come through, you manage to, your, your rapier manages to, to, to hit a part of it as, as it kind of becomes corporeal. Um, and it, it, it screeches in pain and turns itself back into in, incorporeal where you, where you attack with the rapier and the rapier just slides through. So you feel a little bit of resistance and then just kind of it skitters through. Uh, um, damage. Uh, so who is next on this? This will next be uh, Mary. Um, I'm gonna try to go for the book and close it. Cool. Okay. I don't know. Um, I don't understand magic. <laughs> make me some kind of roll for this. Make me an athletics roll. Ah, uh, athletics. Let's see. Jump here. and dive and try to grab. Oh, yeah, that's not good. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, I got a 91, and by athletics is a 31, so no. Wow. <laughs> as, as you go and you kind of run and you kind of throw it across the room from the fireplace, as far as it can be. <laughs> close the book. You kind of, you, you slip and skid on the broken wood uh, um, that has come from the table as the table has collapsed. And you kind of just tumble over and end up in the corner, kind of <laughs> flat against a corner somewhere. Um, Fantastic. <clears throat> looking a little bit dazed. Um, Klaus. The, 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 yeah. This is probably the first time you have ever experienced anything that looks like this. You've probably never seen magic of any form. Um, you've certainly never heard of chaos or demons, so... Oh, I mean, Klaus has heard of demons. Everybody's heard of demons, right? No, not really. No? There's not, like, no it, it's very much kept quiet. It'll be like Warhammer. it'll be like superstitious things that you think are like to keep you like following the good book of Sigma. The Deus, the Deus Sigma would be what you've been taught. So demons, you, you wouldn't have witnessed. You've never heard of anyone witnessing them. But you, you, you know, it's kind of like old wives tale tales, basically. Things that go bump in the night and keep you indoors. So th th this whole experience though, will be very, very, very weird and quick. Well, Klaus is uh, maybe not the brightest and definitely not the quickest person here, but uh, he knows things that ain't right when he sees them. So he's going to just run up there and just try to wrestle this thing down and maybe throw it into the fireplace. You're going to try and grapple? Well, brawling, yeah. With Look, a... I'm real poor and I don't have any weapons. <laughs> okay. Um... Pick up a chair and crack it over it. Also, my brawling is, is quite a bit higher than my melee basic, so... How does brawl work? That's a skill that, comp that uh, peasants get. Doesn't matter because they're old in eighty-one, which is way worse <laughs> than my actual skill. These dice love me, um, but do not understand that it's a roll under game. Let's have a look at brawl. I've never brawl will be the same. It's just again another uh, just, just a types. weapon skill thing, just yeah. a melee. Yeah. But grappling like any RPG and... will be a over overly complicated rule system. I'm sure. Oh no, let's let's do this grappling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I, I've managed to whiff my my weapon skill roll, so um Oh yeah, by what? So I could have succeeded and attacked you with that. Um but as you kind of go to grapple it, you just kind of run at it, jump on it, and just kind of put your arms around and goes, I've got it! And it just kind of turns to mist and smoke as you try to grapple it and you just kind of fall straight through it. 
and oh. on the floor. And you're now lying on top of the book. I'll give you that. You'll, you've landed on top of the book. It seems to have made. Um, as that happens, and you land on top of the book, um, the beast, the demon itself, takes form and becomes solid, um, and laughs at your puny attempt in a weird, cackling, maniacal sound that only appears in your head. It doesn't come out of the creature itself. A tongue lashes out at the front of it, and it looks around with its six eyes, um, its shiny, glistening skin, feathers coming up the arm. Um, but before it gets to do anything, obviously, Melori Mel, Mel gets to go first, or if Francesco wants to jump in, Francesco. I'll let the elf do something first. Let's see how well the elf does. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I guess. <laughs> panic, panic! Hit it harder! Hit it harder! <laughs> Just because I'm an elf doesn't mean I understand this chaos magic. <laughs> um. You know it's a chaos beast. Another, Remember, you've got advantage speed. as well because he hit it last oh, time. Oh god! Yeah, so you get plus ten on it. So, Chris, you will get advantage because you That's technically hit it. Yep. I uh, I rolled ninety six. <laughs> um, Would you like to use first. a fate point? Oh yeah. Whatever uh, it's called, fortune. Sorry. I only I don't have any fortune because elf. Oh yes. Do you yes. have zero fate <laughs> and fortune? No, I have a single point of fate. So you've got a single point of fortune no. then that you can spend. Oh, do I? Yeah. Yes, you'll oh, have a single point. Right. Okay, well then I think I'll probably want to do that. <laughs> We're probably going to give everyone all their fortune back at the end of this. Yeah, it's, it's an insane at the session. The end, it's the, it replenishes at the end of sessions fortune, so you should really utilise it. It's resilience okay. and um, resolve, which resolve. don't come back very easily. Yeah, they're the ones that you need to do some cool storytelling with. But there's been some fun stuff happening in there, so... Yeah, I used mine for gambling, eh? Hey? That's what it's for. I got slightly better, and I fail by one. Mm. So roll. what did you roll? I rolled 76. <laughs> That's and, uh, a fail okay. by one! <laughs> yeah, I have a... This is, this is why I checked, because I rolled a 63. Because okay. if you'd have beaten my roll, you'd have still hit it. But oh, because I failed, I... So, um, with the maniacal laughter that's going on in your head, you just like, you have memories of um, stories that you, you you remember hearing from the temples back on Ulthuan of, of the Dark Prince and how it works. And you kind of get flashes of, of, of these memories of terror um, that you are br brought up to, to, to fear um, and the Dark Gods and the Dark Prince. And the thing well, you're also aware that this is not of that power, but it gives you an inkling of that power, which throws off your aim, and so you kind of miss. David, the thing is with yeah. the opposed rolls, it's because it's the success level difference. So it's it, remember with combat, it's always it's... who fails the least still hits because it's opposed really? rolls. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why fumbles work that way. So it says. Okay. So whoever I have scores you. the highest success levels wins. So even if you're a minus one and your opponent gets a minus two, you still win. You just failed, um, just not as badly. That's the beauty. Oh no, of I've, 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 I've failed by minus three. Yeah, there you go. The elf failed fine. So the elf has actually hit then. Because yes, it's minus one. You just don't get any bonuses to your strength. Yeah, exactly. It'll, oh. it'll be a negative on the damage because it's uh, it makes it more of a flesh wound that you're dealing. So you, you take um, minus one, so your strength plus the weapon minus one. This is why the so system's six really points of damage. Then. Yeah, this is why the system's really good because you still win even if you lost, but not as badly as the opponent. So it stops that whole whiffing kind of thing where it's it's about failing but not as bad. That's what I like about the system now. It's compared to previous editions. Anyway, I'm gonna run this thing through. Um, yeah. Um, it, but, but, Mel did actually do some damage then because yeah, it was only I minus hit. one. And I did minus three. I had minus um, three. So how much damage did you do? Uh, six points. Six points. Okay. Uh, let me do some maths. Oh, I, don't run it yeah, you, you managed to kind of... Klaus is on the other side. Tap its <laughs> foot and it looks mildly irritated at oh, you as you tap its Remember foot. to roll for its incorporeality save thing. Yeah. It's demonic save. Oh, yes. It's... Yeah, no... 
demon save. No, it doesn't. Okay, okay. Uh, Francesco, are you going to try and stab it? Yeah, and I've got advantage, so that puts me up by plus 10, so I'm on uh, fencing of 58. And I'm going to spend a fortune to re-roll that. Um, and I still fail with a 91, so I fail with minus 4. Okay, I have succeeded with plus 1. Oh, so, yeah. So, you as you... As it's laughing at the elf for just kind of tapping its foot, it sees you coming and it launches out one of its tentacles towards you um, and strikes you across the arm. Um, I will actually roll where it's meant to hit you in a minute. It strikes out and, and catches you, giving you uh, eight points of damage. Mm. Um, so the way da Chris is going to take damage here is I've given him the, the amount of damage he's got. He's going to take a number of wounds, which is equal to the damage that I've done, minus his toughness bonus, yep. minus any armor he's got in the location that it's going to hit. And I'm going to roll the location, and if anybody can tell me where 69 is before I find it. 69, dude, is the body. Nice. The body um, has gone straight to the body. So that means I ignore three points. So I take dude. five wounds. That's half of my health. Um, welcome to Warhammer. Welcome to Warhammer. And uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, Gertrude, you don't get to go. It gets to go first. Um, it is a bit annoyed at the elf because the elf has has hurt it, and it, the elf is tapping it on its foot and playing drums on its on its toes. It's not particularly happy about this. So it's going to uh, launch and scream and jump towards Mel. So if you want to do a weapon skill check, and you're probably going to roll a lot better than that. So um... I don't know. I rolled a uh, 98. Yeah, but how many success <laughs> levels have you got? Uh, that's What's 61. The... Six, I've got a weapon skill 61. So 98. Uh, what? Uh, three. Three failures. Okay, cool. Uh, I got minus five. So you still beat me. Oh god. <laughs> um, but but I don't deal damage, or do I deal damage? You will deal damage, so it'll be your strength bonus plus the weapon oh, minus three. So four points of damage. Four points of damage. Uh, it laughs maniacally at you as again you just kind of tap it, and it doesn't look at all bothered by this. Hmm. Um, would you like to attempt to uh, throw some more fire at it? I'm going to roll. No, some fire. no, absolutely not. Gertrude's going to do what any sensible person would do, any sensible merchant, and get the heck out of here. <laughs> yes. She runs out the door. It runs and hides with Jill. Oh, uh, she's going to get Jill ready to go. Limp out of here. <laughs> Jill, Jill is still lame. Jill is limping out of here. Hey, uh, so you have lost your merchant. Cool. Um, who's next? Uh, Mary. Um, oh, man, I see Gertrude leaving. <laughs> um, I'm going to try to pick myself up. I'm going to do one more attempt at getting the book, but I'm going to do it as I'm trying to run. The book is currently under Klaus. Oh, it's under Klaus. Okay, then never mind. I am going to run out as well. I am... <laughs> I have no weapons. <laughs> what happened to pick up a chair? <laughs> I mean... <clears throat> Crystal is role-playing a character. Yeah, Don't like... I, criticize. I'm you run out and stare through a window and start making notes through the window. <laughs> actually, no, I'm going to try to... I'm actually going to go out and see if I can find the man that, that had the book. Okay. Um... Mm, good thinking. Make me, is it, is it investigate? Make me. Are we perception? For investigation. Sort of no, it's going to be, I'm going to do outdoor survival. Make me an outdoor survival role because you're going to be trying to find okay. those footprints in the mud. Oh, uh, no. I uh, lose by two. That's not going to. 
matter. Um, as you as you kind of go out, run outside, and you kind of scan the ground, looking for footprints or kind of scanning the the the, the compound of the the coach and horses. All you can see is that the the main gate that you came through is slightly ajar, um, and then it's just darkness as it's become night now, and the the rain is kind of washing everything away. You realise that if if you could find him, he's probably going to be in the woods and probably not in a very very nice way because these woods at night and this is. So I'm gonna go easy. shut the gate. Out of Probably a sensible idea. Don't out want of, anything else getting in. Out of pure yeah, interest. there's dangerous things out in those woods. We wouldn't <laughs> want them getting in with our demon. <laughs> out of pure interest, is this demon unstable? <sighs> nope. Oh, bollocks. Yep. Well, he has a very, <laughs> uh, very supportive home life. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, his dad's very nice to him. Was fed, fed, fed him bird feed as a young child and nurtured his torment quite well. Um, right. Where uh, is that goddamn bluebird? <laughs> <laughs> it's the bluebird's farm. Klaus, as you are lying on a book, what do you want to do? Uh, I guess I will pick the book up and run it over to the fireplace and throw it in since that was... Uh, that's what uh, Gertrude suggested that we do from the start. I don't think it'll help, but hey, let's see. As, as um, you pick up the book and run over to the fire and throw it in, um, again, you're hearing the maniacal laughter um, in your head, and you start to see flashing lights um, that, again, appear within your eyeballs rather than actually kind of out in front of you, kind of like... Actually, within your head, you're seeing these flashing lights. Um, but the laughter, becomes even, the laughter becomes even greater as you throw the book into the fire, and the book just burns. And the demon just laughs at your uh, pathetic attempt to get rid of it. Hmm. So we find out that some kind of ritual to get rid of it was in the book. <laughs> yeah, the only way to, to stop the <laughs> demon from ruling the earth was to uh, actually finish the book. <laughs> Unfortunately, Klaus is illiterate, so he would never get there anyway. And we... <laughs> it's just how you deal with most books. You're just like, books are for burning, you know? It's just uh, what we do. No, ma'am. You hang the only book, book you hang a book on a peg at the outhouse. Paper is very expensive. <laughs> Yeah, maybe do do you do you take a page out of the book and keep it to sell for later because it's paper? And paper is valuable. No, Gertrude said to burn it, so I'm following following my instructions. Burn the book. <laughs> well done, Klaus. Well done. Klaus knows his place. It's at the very bottom of this hierarchy. <laughs> You're not even in the hierarchy. Right. Okay. I'm now. beneath the mule. <laughs> Kind of with the cart, maybe. Right, Mel. Uh, how are you? What are you going to do? If at first you don't succeed, hit it again with a big stick. Is what I like to say. Uh, oh my good god! Um, that was ninety-eight again. I'm I've got, I'm using like the standard Google dice roller, and I'm beginning to think that it's cursed. Um, but yes, yeah, so yeah. that's ninety-eight. Actual so that's dice really are good. Sun. Yeah, you should use actual sure. dice. I think uh, I think DOJ should investigate the uh, Google Dice Roller because it's been pretty bad for me too. <laughs> yeah. No, my uh, actual dice are just as poor. <laughs> oh. Yes, yeah, so that's three oh. degrees of fail failure on trying to whack it with a big stick again. This, this is this is welcome to Warhammer. Um. In our defense, it is a demon, so you know they're it they're tough a... to hit, obviously. Obviously, it's not like it's a big gribbly thing trying to rip your face off at all. No, it's um, mostly ectoplasm and smoke, right? As 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 your um your staff comes down to try and attack it, um, it leaps out one of its tentacles. It wraps it around the staff and just grips it solidly in place. You try to pull it away, and it doesn't. Ew, and then, as you do pull, it 
pushes it back against you and it jams your your, your staff into your into your stomach uh, and you take seven points of damage uh the classic demon move stop hitting yourself <laughs> stop hitting yourself <laughs> Uh, so remove your toughness bonus from that and any um, armor that you have on your body. And you said sorry, seven points of damage? Seven points of damage, yes. I am going to use my fast ability to act now anyway. Or I was going to act now anyway. Um, and I'm going to spend a point... I'm going to spend a point of my... Uh, whichever one it is. Is it resolve or resilience? Resi uh, I'm going to spend one a point... That you can spend, yeah. I'm going to spend my resilience, spend a point of resilience, and I'm going to crit this bastard with an 11. I just pick the dice roll. I'm going for an 11, which is a critical for me, yep. uh, which means it will score me four success levels automatically in the oppose roll. Yep. And Ooh. it also means even if it tries to oppose me, I will always win by at least one success level. So I will let you have this. Um, Do you want to roll the oppose roll? Because I want to see what its minus is. Because if it's really big, I want it. I'm God! <laughs> Does it still get its incorporeality thing? Again? I, it's not incorporeal. It's not incorporeal. It, um, It'll still get its demon yeah, save. It's, your, your thing. it's got its demon save, but uh, I... Rolled a hundred. <gasps> Critical fail. So how much is zero, that? So well, that counts as a fumble as well on its on its part. Yeah. So I because because I failed so badly, I am going to let you hit him with the critical and not give him his demonic save. Okay. Um, I'll roll to see where I hit him because it's a critical. So the critical yeah. table time. Um, I hit him in the. In the 66, which we know is the body, and I do a, I do a 49, which is a ragged wound, so it takes two extra wounds, plus the damage I do, which is, what, hold on, if it, how much did it fail by? Six, what was the success levels of its fail? Six. Six, and I succeeded by, uh... Four three because i didn't have an advantage so that's nine plus my strength bonus is another three so that's 12 plus damage is 16 16 17 i do 18 points of damage and it takes two bleeding conditions which means it takes two extra damage at the start of every turn i was oof doesn't even need, you don't even need to do any of that um, oh great it's just so you only you, you, um so he's just a baby demon. He only had two hit points. Oh no, no, he's got his. So how many did you do in total? Did you say? Uh, sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah. Okay. Um. He did. He did. Uh. So how you how you you stabbed him in the chest in you? the body? I just went straight through. Yeah. As as it's kind of playing, don't hit yourself with the elf because. Demons and elves don't get on very well. They're not. They're not close friends. They're not. Then they they have a bit of an argument, um, difference of opinions and things. So pokey, pokey, pokey. You take the opportunity to to just bluntly go stupid, evil thing, and just stab it straight through the thing. And um, the the laughter in your head that you're hearing at the moment just kind of slowly changes into screams of pain and terror um, that slowly fade out, and all the um, the colours that Klaus was seeing in his eyes um, dis slowly dissipate. And the creature just disappears into um, smoke again and dis uh, as if it has never existed other than the utter destruction of the table um, that he was standing upon. Was that the bird? What in Moore's name was that? Uh, and I wipe my blade on Klaus. <laughs> The blade is surprisingly clean. It has oh, nothing. Right. I'll still wipe it on Klaus. Got me a new jacket already. Oh, I'll lean on my staff, check injuries, and just pat Francesco on the shoulder. Good fight. Melalorian, what, 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 what kind of thing was that? 
Mm. Bad thing. Um, uh, my demon, yes. It's the demon? One. Was that one of them beast men you was talking about? No, no. Are you sure? Yeah. Where is the man who made it? Where is that strange fellow? I'm, uh, I'm injured as well. I'm going to tend to my injuries and I'll, I'll, I'll imagine that Marie is off doing something really stupid. <laughs> um, no, I am I am leaving him to the forest. Oh, yeah, you're uh, locking us in here with our, our cursed book and demon. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Right. The book has been burnt. You burnt the book. So I am actually going to he and, and Rian. Okay. I am going to go to the stable while I'm out there. Find the stable boy. Well, you're gonna and... find Gertrude pretty fast. <laughs> <laughs> and I am I am going to basically like grab him and be like, who was that man? I'm gonna describe him. What horse did he come in on? Where did he come from? Does he have anything in the stable? Hello, me lady. Uh, what man? I'm going to describe the man that that uh, had the book. Yeah, he, he still says, yeah, what man? Mari, Mari, don't even bother with that halfwit. Come here and help me with Jill. We need to get out of half-wick? here. You we'll hop on the car. You than anybody else has. You be quiet, sir. I'm sorry. You're not even a sir. You don't even deserve that. You peasant. Mari, Mari, come over here. We need to get Jill up. Boy. <laughs> uh, Jill is not moving anywhere right now. <laughs> well, then we need to get my cart out of here. We'll 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 drag Jill it out. We'll asleep. drag it out. We'll we'll go out into the woods. We'll we'll survive. No, no, we won't. If there are beastmen out there or whatever it is, they we well, won't. then what the heck was in there? I don't know. I Sigmar. We need to. This place isn't safe. I think. We should probably like check on the rest of the group because, you know, if they're oh, all dead, I don't know. Maybe we should just burn the entire inn down. That would, <laughs> that would, that Ooh, would yes, surely still fire destroy going. the Hang on one second. No, not yet. I mean, that's going to assure absolute destruction. That's for sure. Of the demon, probably not. God, are they immune to to fire? I have no idea. Mari, you're you're a learned person. You read lots of books. Or newspapers? Yeah, I don't read those books to newspapers. Oh, right. Okay, you don't. <laughs> there probably isn't a Demon Daily in the Dispater Times. Come on. <laughs> I uh, I know better than to read those type of books. I, I I'm sorry. I shouldn't even even inferred that. I apologize. But we need to go. We maybe we could just grab these horses. We'll just get these horses. I mean, clearly everyone's dead inside anyway. Let's go double check to make sure. You go first, Mari. You go first. Okay. We don't know what we're going to find in there. I'm going to find... It could be find... waiting for us. Is there some sort of bludgeoning object? <laughs> like uh, no, there'll like... be like rakes or kind of things within the um, stables and stuff that you could have. Like brooms, maybe some small wooden club things in there yeah there'll be things around that you could pick up and all eat. right i'm gonna pick up something that's like a club wait truly right. they have like a gertrude for gertrude will will pull out her dagger okay you go first mari i'll i'm right behind you yeah you have the sharper object all right let's go yeah gertrude <laughs> is behind mari but you know a decent distance <laughs> 15 feet let's say <laughs> One football field. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna like slowly open the door and peek in. What do I see? Uh, as you as you peek in, um, where, where should I say? You you you, you see um, this purpley blue demon poking the elf with its own weapon and say. Like, um, in this gun. It's, 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 it is as com- comedic as, as, as you'd expect. This writhing tentacly thing just going <laughs> and uh, Francesco lunging forward in that kind of stereo. Whoa! I am Montoya! 
Baby, um, kind of Zorro esque thing, stabbing um, the demon and it disappearing into nowhere. All right, I'm Most, going the to. Two, the, the two people who were sat in the corner drinking and laughing are still sat in the corner drinking and laughing and not really paying attention to what's going on. They seem very drunk by now. Okay. I am going to turn around, shut the door, and go, Oh my God, Gertrude, it's a bloodbath in there. Oh my God, they're all dead, all of them. <gasps> no, Mari, we have to leave. Oh no. And Gertrude starts running towards the stable. <laughs> I am, I am gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna go and go back to the stable. I'm gonna put down my bludgeoning object. I'm gonna go to Gertrude. Gertrude, it's fine. Francesco has it's taken care of it. It's not yes, fine. it is. You are overreacting. Overreacting? You just told me there's a bloodbath. You can't joke about these things when there's demons abound. I wouldn't be joking if they were if they were actually all dead. Mari, Mari, Mari. Let's just establish this one ground rule for the rest of our, our adventures. I know you're a writer and I really respect that. And I think there's a great future between us, but we should probably establish as a ground rule that we should not joke about the ruinous powers. I'm not joking about the ruinous powers. Okay, well, please don't He's prank me about like all that of again. our friends and acquaintances being horribly dead. Yeah. <laughs> it's Jeez. totally different. <laughs> it's fine. Okay. But let's all get right. Jill back so that she can rest because she's injured. Wait, Mari. How do I know the demon didn't possess you to try to lure me back? Gosh. It's Fine, Gertrude. If if I if the demon was trying to lure you back, would I give you the time to take care of Jill? Mari, tell me something that only Mari would know and not the demon. Um, that you paid way too much for this cart and this mule. Fuck. Okay, I believe you. All right, let's go back and stop. <laughs> Right. I, I will help Gertrude get the get Jill back and settled. We all knew that. And any horses that she may have tried to hitch up so that it doesn't look like she was trying to steal them. Listen, I thought 75 gold crowns is a good deal. It was a good lease, okay? I didn't understand. Lease? Didn't understand that the, the, the cart horse and buggy manufacturers try to take advantage of you with those. Yeah. You, you leased this? Dad, that's why I, I need to do the, I keep need to be a merchant. Oh my God. Well, yeah, no wonder you're now, you're now roped into it for like the rest I, of your ex life. Exactly. Listen, I thought I figured, you know, a 25 year lease, I'd be dead before the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> Gertrude, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to talk finances at some point because oh my goodness, are you making yeah. bad financial choices? Yeah. Bad merchant, bad. Yeah. And I think we rejoin the rest of the party. <laughs> um, I think at this point, in how bad's the fire in the uh, in? Oh, uh, the fire is now quarter tabled. Um, it's starting to uh, spread. Wait. Wait, when did the fire leave the fireplace? Uh, when Gertrude threw, threw it across the oh, room. Oh, right. right, right. <laughs> um, I think I'll direct... Uh, class, class! And we'll find something that we can just try and bat the, the fire out and move the any burning embers and wood into the fireplace itself, because that's a safe place to put it. Elsie's is very much aware that wet things stop fire. But the building... Well. It's... It's not, you're not going to be able to pick things up now. Like the actual table is properly burning and properly, like there's, there's a fire in the middle. Get a bucket of water then. We'll wait. I mean, I, we kind of need the, the elf back for this. Yeah, yeah, sure. Right. Um, Do you? Do you? Yes, I mean, we, oh, the devil. Back. I'm here. 
I'm here. I was just shoveling my face. I was laughing off camera at the <laughs> I just didn't but, think people wanted to see me chewing on stream. So, just, hello. Yes, I'm here. Fire bad. Fire yes, bad. Fire bad. <laughs> uh, right. Fire bad. Building possibly going to burn. Because yeah, what? The hay has caught. Than, than the demon. Are you running away? Are you? How are you dealing with the fire? Uh, backing away slowly. <laughs> and how is everybody else going to be dealing with the fire then? Um, House has been told. Do, to... do we have any buckets? Are there any? You know, I mean, I know we have, you know, drinking steins or whatever. But there must be a, a trough for the horses that we can take get a bucket to. Yeah. Or there's a or... bucket near. Klaus is clever. Um, he can just grab some wet mud and just... Oh, Klaus, quick, grab some wet mud and just throw it on the fire on the table. That'll put it out. Yeah, Klaus will, will exactly go... Exactly where there's a lot of wet mud because Klaus has dug some graves already. It's true. Klaus has access to a shovel. <laughs> is the table yeah, Klaus... really, really burning? Like, is it burning head-to-toe burning? Yeah, the whole table will be gone. I mean, if we could, we is it feasible that we could grab we could the legs of it? I was the table. Chuck the be, the table out the window to the water. Mm. I will let you try that. Um, I'm, I ask you if you want to try and do this. I'm yeah, I think we should chuck it out the window. Off. I mean, the the inn is trashed already tonight, so why not? The, the chuck door it out is the right there. My lord, the door is right over there. We could just pick up the table and, and move it. It may not side. fit through the through the door, so let's just do you the window. They build the table, the in around the table. I'm I'm assuming the windows are push open. Or <laughs> it's not as fun. I'm, assuming the... <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm trying to work out. I'm going to let you. If you want to do this, um, it's going to be endurance. Okay, Klaus, oh. get on with it. This is your primary skill, is it not? Uh, it's it's right below melee brawling. Yes. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> if you fluff this, you're going to catch. Fire. Oh great! Uh, I got a 17, and uh, my target number was 41. So I believe that is two degrees of success. I got a 46, so I think I'm mostly too afraid by the flames <laughs> to even bother. It's on fire now. Yeah. So Klaus, you 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 have. No of burning tables and things you walk forwards um you've been told by a lord what you, or what you feel is a lord um to do this thing and you manage to find this immense amount of strength and, and courage to pick up this table and just launch it through a window <laughs> you don't open the window um because windows are a new concept to you but they need to be open and this flaming table just shatters through this window, um, destroying it. And there's now a smoldering pile of wood outside the building. Um, this, and is hole. Why, this is why Klaus is here. I guess the real strength was the muscles we built along the way. Bravo, Klaus. <laughs> Bravo. Yes. Much well gusto. Done, young man. <laughs> and the two, the two guys in the corner see this and they're just like, Yay, cheers, drinks! As they kind of just Are they buying us drinks. Painting. Yeah, sure. Can, we'll take Karen some in the drinks. Corner, watch us kill demon. So yeah, I'll take drinks. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so they order a round of drinks. Um, Can I get a I bottle of spirits to put on my wound? And uh, yeah, but as, as you sit down, Gustav turns, turns around to you and goes, "You do realise you're going to be paying for this round of drinks. Those two don't have any money." Oh well. Uh... How much is a bottle of spirits? <laughs> Uh, I'll look it up now and take it off the money I've yeah. got. <laughs> um, seems to be what I'm doing. Um, a bottle of spirits is uh, a pint of spirits, so a bottle is two pint shillings. Of spirits. Yeah, pint. How many shillings? Two. Two. Yeah, that's Oof, we got crazy. plenty. Although we were already drinking ale before, and I think oh. the the saying is uh, "spirits before ale, you won't get pale." I'm just pouring it on my 
fl- on my wound and bandaging myself up because I've oh, got okay. bandages. Right, fair so I'm, I wanted well, something that was clean. It. I'm not using ale. I mean, apparently uh, there is a no, wine I... and spirits drink that's mixed too. Mm. No, I, no will... I was making a liquor before beer. You were in the clear joke. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll sit there drinking some spirits as I'll, I'll direct Klaus. Klaus, wash the uh, wound and uh, bandage it for me, young boy. Are you asking Klaus to do this for you? Yeah, of course. Cool. Make me a constitution roll. <laughs> me? Klaus is not clean. Klaus is anything but clean. He's oh, trying. Come on. He was. What did you get? No, make, like make me some kind of roll. I'm going to see if no, you no, get poisoned from Klaus's roll. dirty hands. Oh, for it, f- it has been established that Klaus keeps a, a I get a five on him. I get a five. To build the demons of sickness away. So yeah. I get a five. We surely wash Klaus's hands in some expensive whiskey or something. Followed oh, up by shame. followed by up by giving Klaus the rest of the bottle. Most probably, he can do yay. Not that there is a constitution here, but there'd been other done under endurance. There's no constitution, so but yeah, yeah it's endurance. Yeah. Um, cool. Can I make a heal roll then? Um. Yes. I have it as a skill. I've just noticed the time as well. So what I'm yeah. going to do. Um, because we're kind of, there's not much more, but there's a little bit more. Well, there's, there's quite a lot more to this part of it. Um, um, FYI, I rolled a 23 on the heal skills. That means I heal um, I heal uh, intelligence bonus plus success level, which means yeah. I get three wounds back, which puts me at wounds of two. So it begins to heal. We, we seal it up just for purposes of expediating the story here. Done. Yeah, so we'll just expediate this little bit now as well. Um, we kind of close off the night. <laughs> um, so you 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 do sit down with these two other drunks who are the um, the coach drivers, whatever they're called, um, and they they tell you that they're heading to Altdorf and that, that for the five of you, if you wanted to go with them on the coach rather than having to walk, um, the full trip would cost 10 silver shillings in total for the five of you. Um, what about hmm. Jill? Oh, no, sorry, it's not 10, it's five, sorry, five. Well, I think, and maybe this can be a good explanation, uh, David, for how we can how we can do this. I think yeah. if Jill doesn't have to carry all of us and can just follow along in back, she'll be able to make it. She just wouldn't be able to carry the extra 500 pounds of of all of us. So if we ride in the coach, we'd be able to bring Jill with us. Does that sound fair? Yeah, that sounds fair. Um, it's kind of how I was going to do it. She's she's not well enough to carry people, but she can pull the coach. Um, but if Gertrude would like to make a haggle roll, yes, yes. I'll get this cheaper. I will haggle. Listen, you've already got a lot of people on here on your coach, and you know it seems like you guys made a lot of money. And we don't, you know, just we're just burgers, and and we even have a peasant with us. He doesn't have a shilling that he could can't he can't rub two shillings together. Literally, he doesn't know how to. I might give him and two shillings. I to exactly failed. That. I failed by three levels of failure. Okay, they they they're too drunk to understand what you're saying. <laughs> um, they just kind of look at you. No, five, 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 five. And they just kind of get like that and get. I'll deep. pay five shillings. It's fine. If they're that drunk, just tell them in the morning that they agreed to three. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna need you to role play that. <laughs> I might try a charm skill <laughs> on them to do exactly that. In advance. I've bought a bottle of liquor. I'm gonna get them more drunk. And then we'll no, and no, as soon as soon as you agree the price of five shillings, they go okay. Give it, give, 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 give now. And if if you give them the money, they will just go straight to good stuff and spend it on alcohol. We we'll give them the three. Give them. Th- <laughs> I'll just pass them three shillings then instead, actually, and see how they react. They can't count, I'm sure. <laughs> da, 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 da. Yeah, they don't notice, um, <laughs> and they're just like. Gustav, 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 more, more, more! And they just, they spend the money that you give them on alcohol. And they, they after after about maybe another hour, it kind of gets to what would be 11 o'clock-ish. They 
and passed out on the table. I'm going to make a consume drunk. alcohol test because I feel it's appropriate at this point. I fail a consume Everybody alcohol make a test. Everybody makes a consume alcohol test so if you are I can, drinking. I can make up to, uh, is Basically, if you fail as many as your toughness bonus, that's when you have to roll on the are you drunk table. I'm halfway drunk. It's good. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. I am drinking like none other. I got a two. Wow. Oh, you, 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 are, you are out facing everybody. Drinking like a dwarf. Uh, if you yeah. fail your test, you get minus 10 on your weapon skill, ballistic skill, agility, dex, and initiative. I uh, know intelligence for the um, for the rest of the time until you do some other stuff. Um, yeah. It's only appropriate for an elf. I failed by six degrees. Wow. <laughs> What's your toughness face. bonus? Uh, toughness is uh, 13. It, it 13. just counts as a fail. It doesn't. They have to fail as many times as their toughness bonus. Oh, fail as many times, not. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so uh, I got a 34 is... against a skill of 35. So Excellent. Klaus cool. is a hard drinker. I like this. Yeah, I expect Gertrude probably doesn't want to spend the money on drinking and therefore usually abstains, except to drink ale because it's better than drinking filthy oh. water. Yeah, cool. Okay, um, and what we'll do is you have been given your rooms uh, by Gustav. He, he gave you the discounted rooms. He's finished off and he's now busy trying to make his trashed in look reasonable. Um, in the way that he has. Um, the two uh, coachmen are passed out on the table. Um, Gustav is kind of poking them a little bit, saying you need to go to the to, to sleep elsewhere. You can't sleep here. And then he wanders off and you hear him trying to call like the stable board to, to <coughs> carry them. And you guys go off to, you have two rooms. Each has two beds in it. Right. Klaus. <laughs> Klaus does not get a bed. <laughs> I will Klaus pay assumed Klaus... he would be sleeping with the uh, with the mule. Cla <laughs> so, no, no, yeah. no, Klaus. Klaus. <laughs> let's let's be fair to Klaus. Klaus, I will pay for you. I will pay ten ten pence right now, and you can sleep in the common room. And we've lost Elaine somewhere. I don't reckon somewhere. anyone's ever said, let's be fair to Klaus before. So hold on, Are you just... going to be really nice to Klaus and let him have a bed in the common room? Oh yeah, he's... He, he's sleeping in the common room where there's it's cots and everything in the common room. It's just not very nice. Um, you have to pay extra for the cots. Well, he can sleep in the common room. He might have to sleep on the floor with a blanket, but I don't care. He's he's at least dry. Cool. All right. Um, and you all go off to sleep and we will deal with... The journey tomorrow, not tomorrow. Next session. The journey is going to start in game term tomorrow, but next session. That's what I thought you meant. Yeah. Words. Um, um, I'm sure so Marie and and uh, and Francesco will be talking about how to write this. Yeah, there. Uh, the Mar Marie is going to be uh, staying up for pretty late, uh, recording things that happened. Yeah, unfortunately we've lost Elaine right now. I'm sure she might pop in right at the end, but I mean we are right at the end. Um, yep, yeah, so we David, are. if you like to wrap up, I think it's now a good yep. time, isn't so, it? So there is a little bit more technically to this section, but it's very very short. So I'm going to give you the XP for this section now because you'll move on in the next session. So um, you managed to catch Philip cheating, so everybody gets ten XP for that. Um, you did not capture Philippe. You killed him. I mean, I can go dig him back <laughs> up. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're not going to get any XP for that. You managed yeah. to um, murderize the demon. So everybody can have 25 XP for murderizing Yay! the demon. Sweet. And just... I don't think of anything else that we can. You got Philip. You got the demon, uh, and just for finishing the session, have another ten XP as well. So what is that? That's yeah, that's 
it's 40, 45. 45. 45. I'm looking at what I can know. I'm tempted to knock five off Francesco because you pissed off Lady Soldi. <laughs> Uh, that's that's on her. Uh, yeah. We'll, but we'll know. What we'll do is we'll do that next yeah. time because there's something that we can do with that. <laughs> hey. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Uh, you see, my my first time, I'm I'm saving up to learn to read because I think Marie can teach me to read at this rate. Gertrude yep. also knows how to read. Wow. Awesome. And write. Yeah. So you've got 45 experience. Um, you've managed to um, nearly destroy a, a, a pub. Found a crap ton of money. Um, met a demon. Um, yeah. And I yeah. Like to think of it as saving a pub from total demonic annihilation. I think everyone <laughs> lent important skills to this. This so far. I mean. No one's died yet. Klaus chucked a table out the window, which I thought was important. Yeah, that was that was that was my impressive. And and weirdly brawled with the demon toe-to-toe, -to -toe, which is really stupid. <laughs> well, attempted to, but kind of went through the demon. Yeah, so cool. Um, I'm hoping you all are um, enjoying the start of Warhammer Fantasy and the mentalness that basically it is. Um, and yeah, this is it. Um, it will continue probably on the same lines in the next session, in two weeks' yeah. time. Two weeks' time, mm. tune in 8 p.m. GMT, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, because clocks have gone yep. back. Uh, obviously, if because you enjoy this, uh, you can go back to our character creations uh, session on uh, Go Ahead and Gaming's Twitch. That's mostly on YouTube, hopefully, or it will be, and it will be there with the rest of the sessions. You can go all the way back and you watch Wrath and Glory uh, that we've been playing. Um, obviously, if you enjoy this, uh, you can go to Cubicle 7's website and buy directly the PDF and the book there. Uh, you can buy, uh, if you go and watch the stream from yesterday, you can watch the one shot of Hell Rise to Help, a spooky Halloween kind of themed uh, scenario that myself and David have written for Cubicle 7 for War Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, and it is hilarious. Spook. Uh, obviously, if you want more content, you can go over to Dark Days Radio, www.dark-days.org, and you find tons of episodes. There is a fresh new episode about spooky stories with uh, David, uh, Crystal, and Mike talking about those. Uh, you can also, right now, there should still just be a sale going on on Drive Through RPG. You can get all of Dark Days Radio's uh, Storyteller Vault uh, content there at like 25% off. Um, and you can watch our Wrath and Glory stuff. And currently, Soulbound is now out in print from Cubicle 7, so you can pick that up. Uh, I don't have my copy yet. Wrath and Glory is soon coming to print, so you can pick up a hard copy of that. Uh, and obviously there is coming up, I mean, Enemy Within you can buy right now. So what David is running and what we're playing through, you can buy that now. You could follow along as you then proceed to run it for your own group and, you know, make them make mistakes that we didn't or, or vice versa. Uh, or use some of the bits which I've not used. Yes, because there's the companion book, which has basically got there's Grognard stuff. So the beauty is if people have played this very ancient campaign, I say ancient, it's from the 80s. But the point is, if you play it, and people have already played it. Uh, Cubicle 7 have done the companion that has Grognard uh, sidebars, so you can remix the scenario to create new stuff yeah. that they never have played before, which is great. Uh, There's also, two... within the structure of it, there are there are bits that you can pull out and pick in. Yeah. So um, It's not all just a linear story where you follow things. So a lot of drop. the scenarios you can pop in. Uh, there is Death on the Reich is available with the companion, and they've just now the uh, Middenheim third. book. I can't remember what the third one's it's called. It's Middenheim. It's definitely Middenheim, uh, which obviously is interesting because it covers Middenheim, another city-state of the Empire, and also looks into the religion of Ulrich, who is another god, who was the god that god? kind of was Sigmar's, was Sigmar's god, god when Sigmar was mortal. So... There's lots and lots of cool stuff for Warhammer. You can get really engrossed in it. And we will try and 
bring some more into the game because clearly Mike and I and David are referencing tons of Warhammer lore left, right and centre because it's fun. Um, with that, I think, again, thank you, David, for running this. I'm enjoying playing, mm -hmm. as you can tell. Uh, Crystal, thank you again. Chig, thank you. Mike, thank yeah. you again. Uh, thank you, Elaine. But you're not here. Um, for playing. Your internet and, died. And we'll see you in two weeks' time yeah. for more of this. So goodbye for now. And we'll see you soon. So bye. Bye. bye.